Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Lost Ox Media. As always, I'd like to thank you for joining me on yet another week of debauchery, where we take a second look at what you just watched. We have a lot of good jamokes on this week's docket, some very, very good ones. We got Donald Trump's appearance on the Joe Rogan Experience. This is going to be wild. Donald Trump is dropping some fire funny lines in this one. Then we have Brianna Chicken Fry's breakup with Zach Bryan. I don't even know this guy, but apparently Dave Portnoy does, and he has a lot of interesting things to say about it. Then we have Sean Evans on Hot Ones. This one is going to kind of blow your mind, as he has probably the worst interview that he has to date on his show. Like, this one is mind-boggling. Then we got, of course, KSI and Logan Paul acting like the true jamokes that they are. And of course, how can we forget the week segment? What's eating Ethan Klein? We, we always come through with the Ethan Klein debauchery. And this week, this guy is still crashing out over this whole Hassan Piker uh, anti-Semitism feud thing that he's got going on. It's kind of mind-boggling. Like, the fact that this guy is just going off the rails over someone as fucking lame as his son, it just breaks my little heart to see that Ethan's fans have to go through this, you know? So we'll be talking about all that and more on another great episode of Lost Ox Media. Let's give it up for you guys, the listeners, because without you, what would this show be? Just music. It would just be music. We'd just be listening to this. All right. So, as we let this play out a little bit, I'll start priming you for this Donald Trump and Joe Rogan interview because that's what we're going to get into first. So, this has been a very long time coming, if you're not aware of this. People have been talking about this forever. Joe has kind of always said that he doesn't want to have Donald Trump on his show. He's kind of stated that publicly throughout the years. And now that all this hype is coming around, Donald Trump's doing podcasts out the goddamn ass, Joe Rogan wants a piece, okay? And you better believe having the biggest podcast platform on planet Earth, Donald Trump is going to give that ass up, baby. You already know that shit. So let's turn down this music, get these time codes up, and get right into it because it's a doozy. We're going to start with the intro. Of course, we love our JRE intros around here, if you don't know. So uh, let's hop right into that. Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. All right, we're rolling. Ooh, good to see let's you. Let's go. They're rolling. Here we go. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, I wanted to play this, but we decided we shouldn't play it because uh, it could get copyright struck, and we don't want to get the episode. We don't want anybody to have any sort of way to get it down. Sure. But it was the episode of you when you're on the View, and I think it was 2015 or 2006, like when you were running for president. Right. And. You sat, you got introduced as our friend Donald Trump. That's right. Whoopi Goldberg gives you a big hug and a kiss. Joy Behar gives you a big hug. Barbara Walters gives you a big hug. They all loved you. They were all talking about how. Okay, see, now we're going to stop right here on this one. Joe's bringing this up, right? Because he's pointing out how big of like a hypocrite all the girls on The View were when they had Donald Trump on. You know, the first time before he had became president, he was like in the runnings, but he wasn't winning yet. So, of course, they're going to schmooze up to this guy because he's Donald Trump. Before all this president shit happened, everybody wanted a piece of Donald Trump. Okay, let's not forget this. So Joe's bringing this up because he's pointing out how big of a hypocrite these girls are. Joe's probably the biggest hypocrite online. This guy. So notice how he tries to talk to you and say, Well, we wanted to make sure that nobody had any reasons to get the episode taken down. He says this. That's why he doesn't want to play this clip of Donald Trump going on The View. This is bullshit. I'm going to tell you why. Because Joe 
he's constantly bitching about this demonetization stuff. This this is all he cares about. He doesn't care about the if the episode's going to get taken down or not. I mean, I'm sure he cares about it to a degree. But the biggest thing is that cashola, baby. That's all he gives a shit about. And he's always bitching about it on his show. Ever since he it, uh, ended the exclusivity deal with Spotify, now he has a little bit of trouble playing music and certain things on his show because of YouTube copyrights. Now, I find that odd and a little bit ironic because... I cover Joe on my show. I cover shows like Kill Tony on my show as well. And Joe, he likes to try to copyright these kinds of coverage. I get more copyright, quote unquote, strike attempts from Joe Rogan and Kill Tony the most out of anyone that I cover. Anyone. It's all these guys, okay? So this right here that he's bringing this up is a very hypocritical point. But I don't want to stray away from why we're here, right? I don't care about all this politics bullshit, all right? I don't care about the fact... It, yeah, I, I'm here for the same reason a lot of you are here watching this interview. They want to see the crazy shit that's going to come out of Donald Trump's mouth. That is the reason why we are all here today. And we're not going to get disappointed. I'm going to tell you that right now. Watch this. Come up with this, but... The environmentalist dream is windmills, everyone. You know what happens to them? After five years, they start to rot. After 10 years, you have to replace them. Did you ever look at certain parts of California where they have heavy windmills and they've been abandoned and they're all different manufacturers and all different companies? And they I all, haven't seen that. It is the ugliest thing. It looks like a graveyard almost, a graveyard of windmills. Uh, it's pollution. It's so bad. It's it is. It's and in no the more, oceans, it's no different than leaving garbage on the ground. How about in New Jersey, off the coast of New Jersey? They want to build. The people are going crazy not to build them. But we have them. The whales are washing up on shore. Right now, this is where we need to stop right here, so I can contextualize this for this banger line that's about to come out of Donald Trump. And this is the first one, the first line, the first little funny line that we get out of him. So they're having this this little talk about how windmills in California and like windmill energy that we use commonly in the United States is actually rather crude. It's expensive. It's very ugly on the eyes. And he, he starts making points that we didn't hear before the time code. He's like, you should see that there's like, it's like a graveyard over there. There's so many birds. You want to see a bird graveyard? Go under a windmill. Just hang out for a little bit. They start falling out of the sky. That's like what he's talking about. And the environmental impact that these windmills have. And now he's saying how they wanted to start building them along the shorelines in New Jersey. And how people in New Jersey are getting pissed off because whales are starting to wash up on shore. So these are all valid things to talk about if, if they're true. You know, I haven't dug into it myself to make sure they are. But I will take Donald Trump's word for it. But what he ends up saying after he talks about this whale business, I thought was a little bit funny. How about in New Jersey, off the coast of New Jersey, they want to build, the people are going crazy not to build them, but we have them, the whales are washing up on shore. Right. So in 50 years, they had one whale come ashore. Now they had like 18 come in the last year. What is the, what, what is happening with the whales? I've read about this. Well, they say that the wind drives them crazy. You know, it's a vibration because you have those, you know, right. those things are 50 story buildings, some of them. Right. And so the whales now. They're getting, they're going insane because of the vibrations that's coming from the wind blowing into the water and it's causing these whales to go so crazy that they're dying and they're washing up on shore. This is what he's talking about here. This is not the funny part. We will listen to the funny part now. This is kind of funny. And they're 50. super sensitive to vibrations no, they have and those, sounds. They, you know, the wind is rushing, the things are blowing, it's a vibration and it makes noise. You know what it is? I want to be a whale psychiatrist. It I want to be a whale psychiatrist. This is so great. This is a presidential candidate of the United States. Imagine if like Barack Obama came out and was talking about like a serious issue at the podium. And he was like, I want to be a whale psychiatrist. Everybody would start losing their fucking minds. They'd be like, this guy is unfit for any kind of office. But with Donald Trump, we expect this kind of stuff out of him. You know what I mean? We expect these kind of very off-putting, outlandish remarks. Another thing we expect are the zingers. 
if there's one thing that Donald Trump is good for, is making fun of people. This guy has almost like comedic level timing. It's insane. Like for somebody who has never stepped foot on a stage, this guy can bring people to their knees. I guarantee you, if this guy went on tour with Chappelle, fucking he, Chappelle would have a, a trouble following him, okay? This is facts, okay? So now let's listen to this guy start throwing out these good old zingers like I said he would. Donald Trump, not disappointing in this department. Donald, someday, this was a long time, Uncle John, Dr. John Trump, he said, someday you'll have a little satchel at your side and you'll go into a building and you'll be able to blow up New York City. I said, Uncle John, that'll never happen. He's right. You know, he's right. Well, that was the part power of the problem so crazy. with giving nuclear power to other countries, right? Like, well, that was the problem that happened with India and Pakistan. They got nuclear power power and then they were able to weaponize it so basically at, before i even contextualize this for you did you guys see that move i just pulled off <laughs> sip of the water and then i wasn't even thinking about it i subconsciously went right for the coffee right after i'm fucking going crazy over here i'm double fisting these drinks not a good look so what's happening here now is they're sitting there talking about uh, nuclear power and how it's a, actually a better, more cleaner solution than a lot of the stuff we have going on today. And they're talking about how third world, well, not really third world countries, just a lot of other countries in general that don't really f align with a lot of American morals and beliefs, they, uh, they tend to take their nuclear power and they weaponize it. They tend to want to make like nuclear bombs and things like that so he, they're talking about the diplomacies behind like how touchy it is to want to trans uh convert other countries to nuclear power it's a very touchy subject because they're just going to take it turn it into weapons they're going to take that technology and want to use it against other countries so that's what they're talking about now and they're about to start bringing up sleepy joe and this is where donald trump delivers the goods the biggest problem in the world today is not global warming it's nuclear warming. And we have idiots that are negotiating for us. We have a guy that doesn't make it past four o'clock and it's- Got him. Listen to that shit. He's talking about Joe Biden. He's, and I love this. This is like, and it's not like funny on its own. It's not funny at like face value. It's funny because he's like slips that shit into the conversation and then just keeps going with the regular, you know, stuff that he's talking about. This is, kind of genius level shit the way he's doing this listen to this guy it's not global warming it's nuclear warming and we have idiots that are negotiating for us we have a guy that doesn't make it past four o'clock and it's not because of age you know they ought to talk. i know so many guys in their late 80s and they're better than they're. i said to one guy the other day i think you're smarter than you were 25 years ago i've known him a long time he's 89 years old he's He's 89. This guy's sitting here bringing up the fact that he knows people sharp as a tack. They're 89 years old, but Joe Biden, he can't pay, he can't make it past 4 p.m. without taking a goddamn nap. These are the classic, the classic zingers, the one-liners that we get out of people like Trump. This is stuff like this is the biggest reason why people resonate with him. If you haven't picked that up by now, the I'm not saying that I'm a supporter of this guy. I'm not saying I'm not a supporter of this guy. But I'm, I just kind of, I see things for what they are, okay? And this is why people like him so much. Because they're tired of the cookie-cutter politician bullshit that's happening nowadays in the world. And they're sick of it. They want to see something different. So when they see a guy like this... And he says these things the way he does without having any care in the world about them subconsciously that says to people this is somebody who's not part of the current system because anyone who's in the current system would not get away with saying shit like that and this is the stuff that he delivers it's i mean once again doesn't make him the greatest president ever probably makes him the most entertaining president ever though if you think about it so now he's about to start throwing out some more good old zingers right but before he does that, Joe brings up the uh, the assassination attempt. You know, the guy that tried to shoot him during that speech, he kind of nipped his ear. And I thought this was kind of funny. When they bring it up, uh, Joe right away, he's like, let me see it. Let me see the ear. 
and kind of like makes Donald Trump like show him across the table. This is not a uh, typical behavior for Trump. Trump's not used to people like swinging their nuts around him, you know? And you can kind of tell by the way that they interact with each other throughout this thing that they both know how much influence they ha- they both have. And they're not really playing a game of like a pi- they're not really like playing a pissing contest or anything, but you can just see in the body language and the energy that these two know exactly how hard their nuts swing. And they're kind of being careful about that. But when when Joe asks him, like, Get, come here, show me the ear. Then Donald Trump's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nobody ever asked me stuff like this. Like, what are you doing? This is kind of funny, dude. Called human me to being. Do, is that why you called me to do this? No, no. <laughs> we were gonna, I was... Uh, he, was I, he was a nice guy. You see what I'm talking about? You see, Donald Trump, you never see him have that awkward of a smile on his face like that. That kind of like, he's like, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking around, you know? It's a, it's a, it's a harmless little joke, you know what I mean? To see Donald Trump acting like this is kind of crazy. Is that why you called me to do this? No, no. <laughs> we were really gonna, I was. You see that? You see that? Look, let's go back and get a little bit more clear. Look, that's very awkward smile. And he says it. He's like, oh, I'm just kidding. You know people, they say that under their breath. You know, when they say something that they're not, they don't have 100% conviction behind because they're they're worried about the way people are going to portray it in the room or like perceive it, I guess would be the right word. They, they get that awkward smile. Now I'm just kidding. They say it under their breath. This is like Donald Trump's doing that here. Is that, like that why you called me to being. do this? Is that why you called me to do this? No, no. <laughs> we were really gonna, I was, uh, he, was I, he was a nice once guy. Once they shot you, I was like, he's got to come in here. It's all about timing. It's all about the timing. The timing's I think good. Our timing's perfect. Do you even have a scar on your ear? You got anything on there? I do. What do we say? What do we say? What do you got so, there? right over here. Look at him. Oh, right. the Look at him. Donald Trump's so stiff. He's so old and stiff. He can't even, like, he can't even just bend, like, just go like this. There it is. You know. Okay. That's it, Joe. That's, thank you. That's, we can move past the ear now. Okay. It was all planned anyway, so I don't want to talk about it. But look, he's sitting there. Trying to do this, he can't even turn his neck. This guy, is so, he's like, there's the ear. He's like, I, I think I can get a little bit closer. Maybe like that. You see it? It's very, yeah. It's almost like he doesn't want to show it to him fully, right? Look at this. I do. What do we say? What do you got so, there? right over here. Oh, it's I, a tiny little see, mark. It, it zicked right there. Yeah. It's, it healed up pretty fucking good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's little, it's not like... Uh, He's like a child. He's like, look, I got a little boo-boo. And you're like, oh, my boo-boo. Joe's like, come on, let me see it. Joe gives him the hawk pull. He spits on it. He's like, that'll make it all better. No problem. Look at these two fucking assholes. It's, it healed up pretty fucking good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's little. It's not like uh, some of the wrestlers, uh, some of the UFC fighters. No, you didn't get cauliflower. Bit, no, no, no. It, got, it was sort of like a top shot. Mm-hmm. The point of the bullet was Boy. a little of the ass, but you see the the, the things take it off a little bit. But just a little bit, just a, a little bit off the top, you know what I mean? No big deal. I don't know why I went uh, British with Donald Trump just there, you know? But it's so funny. He's doing this whole thing, the whole entire interview. You know how he does that? He, there's very, very like childish qualities about Donald Trump that just make him like, no matter what situation he's in, You just, you can't help but to like laugh or just look at him in a way that you would just look at a child almost. Like when he's trying to explain stuff, he's like, it's just so, it's such a big, you know, he's he's sitting there. The bullet, it was a top shot and there's a huge, you know, huge reaction over the bullet, you know, like that. This is the kind of shit about him that makes me kind of think that he rules you know, because if you could get away with all the shit that he's gotten away with, make it that far in life, just acting like a goddamn child, there's got to be something about you. You know, there's got to be something about you that fucking rocks, you know, and these zingers, they keep coming. And I'm telling you right now, they fucking rock, too. 
Listen to this. The Remember, I lost my... Have, and there's, the rhetoric is also that you're Hitler. And that yeah, in order to thing. stop Hitler, you have to do whatever it that takes. That was okay, yeah. Yeah, and this is... I mean, you're hearing this now. Kamala compared you to... Said your love of Hitler yesterday. It's... it's you it's know, a, Kamala's a very low IQ person. She's... God damn, that's... I almost, when I first heard that line, I almost flew back in my, like, you know when, in movies, when they have, like, an explosion, and the character just fucking gets hit, up, you know, that almost happened to me when I heard that, I was like, god damn, this guy is, like, not holding any punches back, this close to election time, you start saying that the other candidates are low IQ, like, like, this is, like, high school level, like yo mama joke type shit, you know what I mean? Like somebody, I it wouldn't have surprised me if somebody popped up from behind where he was sitting right now and just started going, oh, 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 oh. you know what I mean? A whole like crowd, everyone starts. This is the type of shit that I'm talking about. This is the stuff that you can count on Donald Trump for, you know? He throws that shit out there. And once again, like I said, it's not funny on face value to just be like, oh, she's a low IQ person. You know how many people are saying Kamala Harris is low IQ right now? Nobody gives a fuck about that. That's not the funny part. It's funny because it's him. And and he's just sliding it into conversation and just just tries to keep the conversation pushing. This is, this is like comedy gold. How does this guy not have a goddamn contract already? love of hitler yesterday it's, it's you it's know a kamala is a very low iq person she's a very low iq you know i'm for taking tests too i think anybody that runs for president should take they should give them tests and it's not an age thing it's not based if you look back on history 70s and 80s your greatest some of your greatest leaders in the world world history long time world history so see how he tries to roll this in he's like it's he's flowing into something serious but it's still part of the joke. It's still part of the punchline. She's a low IQ person. Bam. There's the punchline, right? And now he tries to make the conversation flow by going, you know, I've always been in favor for IQ tests, cognitive tests for presidents. You know, some people think it's constitutional. I think it's the American way. I think we need our leaders to be at the top of their game when it comes to the mental department, the IQ department. And... He just keeps like uh, just doing that kind of shit, just little zingers throughout the episode. There's a couple more a little later on that we're going to get into that are pretty goddamn funny. But then he starts talking about, uh, you know, of course, Joe's going to start asking him like critical questions. What are your policies? How would you have stopped this, this and that and the other? And of course, Donald Trump, you know, he's always good for uh, for like making him seem like he's the number one guy, like everybody in the world. They, they just kneel to him no matter what. He's very good for that. And when Joe starts uh, talking about these foreign affairs and different things like that, Donald Trump immediately is like, well, if I was president, if I would have got elected before the steal, you know, if we would have stopped the steal, that Russia would have never even stepped foot into uh, wherever the fuck. They Look, I'm Ukraine. Look, I'm sitting there. I've, I'm... I, you know, I'm not very well versed in this. We're just taking a second look, okay? That's all this is. I'm not uh, Andrew Huberman or fucking Ben Shapiro or I don't know. Who's another good uh, name on this politics shit? Dave Smith. I'm none of them people, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fumble a little bit. But he starts talking about how Russia wouldn't have invaded Ukraine if he was president. And I think it's funny how he uh, goes about explaining this to Joe. Yeah, of course not. Dangerous. But but actually, we have evil people in our country. Yes. If you have a smart president, he can deal with Russia. He can deal with all of it. I had a I. Russia would have never gone into Ukraine if I were president. How would you have stopped it? Uh, he automatic two things. I told him. I said, Vladimir, you're not going in. Look, I love that. I I said, Vladimir, you're not going in. Okay. I love the way he said. I said two I two things. I would have done to him. If Vladimir would have talked about going into Russia, two things would have happened. The first thing that would have happened, I would have looked him dead in his eye and I would have said, Vladimir, you're not going in. Then this is very powerful in and of itself. It's coming from Donald Trump. So you have to remember, he says something, the rest of the world bows down. This is the idea of himself that he has, you know? So he goes on to explain this. 
and kind of dances in circles a little bit. And and that's kind of the little bit more of the funny part here. He automatic two things I told him. I said, Vladimir, you're not going in. I used to talk to him all the time. You're not going in. I can't tell you what I told him because I think it would be inappropriate. But someday he'll tell you. But he would have never gone in. But you know why? I okay, what the fuck was that? So he says, I would have told him, Vladimir, you're not going in. I said, Vladimir, you're not going in. And then he goes on to say like, uh, oh, oh, okay, that, that would have stopped him right there. You know, of course, that would have stopped him. And then the whole point of them talking about this is Joe wants to know how he did it, right? So he says, oh, I had a conversation with him, but I can't tell you what the conversation was about. Maybe he'll tell you what the conversation was about at some point. But I'm telling you, I told him, you can't go in there. You can't do it, you know? So let's w watch this. This is kind of funny because he's, it's like he's bragging about something and then he just goes, well, I can't tell you about it. You know, I did the greatest thing and we stopped it. How'd you stop it? I can't tell you how we stopped it. So is it even true? Automatic, two things. I told him. I said, Vladimir, you're not going in. I used to talk to him all the time. You're not going in. I can't tell you what I told him because I think it would be inappropriate. But someday he'll tell you. But he would have never gone in. But you know why else he wouldn't have gone in? Oil prices at $40 a barrel wouldn't have allowed him, wouldn't have given him the money to prosecute that war, wouldn't have given him the money. See, that's where it would have actually went down. That's where he had the leverage to say, well, I'll, I'll manipulate the, the prices of barrels of oil and that'll fuck you. How's that? But he wants to throw his like, you know, I made it happen by telling him, first of all, you're not going in. And then I did the thing that actually would have made him not go in if I would have been in office. That's how it would have went down. It's just so funny to watch him perform fellatio on himself in such a way. It's very, very, very entertaining. And this isn't going to be the first time that he's like flexing his nuts to Joe about like his uh, affairs with foreign leaders. You know, he goes on to do the same thing about this uh, Kim Jong Wung or whatever it is. I, how do you say this guy's name? Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un. So he goes to say the same kind of shit about Kim Jong-un, but his dig at Kim Jong-un is a little bit funnier. Listen to this. Obama thought we were going to go to war with North Korea. When I met with Obama just prior to the takeover, you know, you meet, you have it's a sort of a ceremonial meeting. But it lasted a long time, a lot longer than it was supposed to last. I said, what's the biggest problem? He said, North Korea. By the time I finished, I was, we, we had no problem with North Korea. We were really, it was a little tough at the beginning, remember? Mm -hmm. He said, uh, I have a red button on my desk. I said, I have a red button also, but mine's bigger than yours and mine works. God damn. I wish I fucked that whole thing up. Listen to this guy. By the time I finished, I was, we, we had no problem with North Korea. We were really, it was a little tough at the beginning, remember? Mm -hmm. He said, uh, I have a red button on my desk. I said, I have a red button also, but mine's bigger than yours and mine works. I like God damn, that's a fucking good line. This is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about that just makes Trump a very entertaining person. He's being dead ass serious while telling this to Joe. So basically what he's getting at is he's saying, when I came into office at first, you know, you have to do these like uh, congressional type of hearings where like or a meeting kind of where you're going in to meet with the president so that they could kind of hand you off the keys. You know what I mean? It's kind of one of those meetings. They kind of hash things over. Well, what do you got going on? What am I going to be taking over? These are kind of the things that they hash out so that the transition happens a little smooth. You know, that probably never happens that way. But the goal is to make the transition happen smoothly. So he's saying to during this meeting with Barack Obama, when he went to go into his first term in office, Barack says, one of the biggest issues we got right now is North Korea. This this Kim Jong-un guy, you know, he's got a lot of nukes over there. He's not letting any of us in. We We cannot regulate this guy for the life of us. And Donald Trump is like, well, what, what? What's he saying over there? And Barack's like, well, he's talking about how he's got this big red button. And Trump delivers this line. This is just classic gold right here. 
time I finished, I was, we, we had no problem with North Korea. We were really, it was a little tough at the beginning, remember? Mm -hmm. He said, uh, I have a red button on my desk. I said, I have a red button also, but mine's bigger than yours and mine works. I like that is just classic fucking gold right there. You cannot beat the stuff coming out of this guy fucking mouth, I'm telling you. I have a big red button. Well, I have a big red button too, but mine's just bigger and it actually worked. This is, you. that's just, come on. I mean, am I the only one? Am I the only one that thinks this guy could actually make it as a full-time comedian? You know? But let's get past all that. You know, because it's funny. But, you know, we have more funny stuff to, to get into. So, you know, remember earlier I was telling you about how he kind of has these little, like, childish tendencies. You know, when he's talking, he does his, it's real big, mom. It's a real big fish that we caught. It's big, mom. It's huge. You know, he kind of does that thing with his hands when he's talking. And, the, and, and then the ear thing, he's like, look at my boo-boo, Joe. Look at my boo-boo. This is, like, kind of this, like, childish stuff that, that, I, I feel like maybe I might be the only one seeing. I feel like looking at him is like looking at a baby trapped in an old man's body, you know, or not a baby, more like a six-year-old, you know, something like that. And this this that's coming up, I thought this was so fucking funny. Watch this. You've done Thank a you. great job. So back to you and back to what what are you and to, first of all i love this idea of you teaming up with robert kennedy right and i love this make america healthy again yep. idea because look at this look at how awkward donald trump looks sitting in that goddamn chair this guy is wearing the hugest goddamn suit jacket you've ever seen with that freaking corn yellow tie you know what what else is the the corn yellow? Oh no, Fight Club. It, the, he was like, oh my boss is wearing his corn blue, corn flower blue tie. This guy's just wearing like an actual corn yellow tie. Look at this thing. Is the the yellowest tie you've ever seen? And they're sitting there, and it's kind of crazy because these chairs, like you know, they bought them for Joe. Like this is Joe's studio, so of course Joe's gonna buy the chairs to like fit his specs you know but joe's like the size of an eight-year-old this guy is like five foot six on a good day like maybe if he wears his wife's heels you know? so these chairs are designed for tiny little men like him he's got a big old guy like donald trump sitting in that guy look at how uncomfortable he looks he's overflowing off of this goddamn chair while they're sitting there talking about rfk you know Let's keep listening. There are chemicals and ingredients that are in our food that are illegal in other countries because they've been shown to be toxic. There's pesticides and herbicides, and there's a lot of shit that's been sprayed on our food that really is unnecessary. So now look, watch. Look at Joe's face. Because you, you can hear it in the background, right? They keep talking. Donald Trump, something starts happening in the background you can hear. And you see Joe's face. Joe kind of starts paying attention to that, and you could see his eyes moving all over the place trying to figure out what Donald Trump's doing while he's in the middle of talking. Watch Joe's face. In other countries, because they've been shown to be toxic. There's pesticides and herbicides, and there's a lot of shit that's been sprayed on our food that really is unnecessary. And there's See, Joe keeps trying to make eye contact with him, and he keeps looking down like, what's this guy fucking shuffling around with over there? Joe, Joe's like really trying his hardest not to like, you know, lose track of the, the thought that he's having while talking to Donald. And it's clear to Joe that Donald's not paying attention to jack shit that he's saying and is just trying to do something on his end of the table. Watch this. There's a lot of health consequences that people are suffering from a lot of these things. And to this chart for you. Beautiful. Because I had a feeling you'd be asking me. Thank Look you. Look at this chart. These are healthier countries. Look where the United States is. I'm gonna this guy fucking brings a goddamn chart. Like a child. He's uh, uh, like he's bringing this chart to Joe. As if Joe doesn't have a, a quarter million dollar studio that they're sitting in right now. Like this guy could just go, Jamie, 
What am I thinking about right now? Pull it up. Jamie's that good. Jamie would pull it up. Just you could. Jamie reads minds. He actually is able to read minds. That's why he's so good at his job. So like, normally when guests come on, they the first mention of something, Jamie zip pulls it right up on the goddamn screen. How many times have you heard guests say, "God damn, he pulled that up quick," or they go, "How did you even find that?" You know what I mean? It's like like I. Uh, fucking Hulk Hogan goes on there. He's like, man, I had a gangbang in, in college back in uh, 73. Probably the craziest video you ever seen online. Turns to the side. He's like, god damn, Jamie, how'd you pull that up? You know, he's like, take that down. We're not supposed to. I was, job is just telling a story. You know, this like the kind of stuff that happens. Uh, that's how good Jamie is. That's how good Jamie is. Donald Trump clearly has never watched an episode of JRE in his life because they're sitting there trying to make these points. And Donald Trump has a stack of charts that he's brought in case Joe asked these critical questions. He came prepared with charts, with hard copy charts, okay? And like a child handing a drawing to their mother, he wants to show Joe this chart so that Joe has the facts. Watch this. Bring from a lot of these things. And I brought to this chart for you. Beautiful. Because I had a feeling you'd be asking me. Thank Look you. Look at this chart. You see how how he looks so accomplished. Watch this. A lot of these things. Look at his face. I brought this chart for you. I brought this chart for you. He's looking at Joe like as if he like he's gonna stop Joe in his tracks. Like Joe's gonna be trying to ask this question, and he pulls out the chart, and Joe's just gonna go, "Oh, well, I guess I don't have to finish asking my question. You got the chart. I mean, this is great. What, what was I thinking? You know, the look on his face. It's like he's legit. This is the look a kid has, like. When I was five, I used to like to draw. I would hand, I would go to my mom. I would say, hey, check out these drawings. She would always rip them up. Sometimes she'd burn them with, like, lighters, you know what I mean, whatever. She could to destroy the evidence of my creativity, you know. But that's just how it went down. I had the same face that he has right now while handing those pictures to my mom, you know. This is this the, the same shit. It was, hey, mom, look what I drew. This is what Donald Trump is doing here. Look, I brought you this chart because I thought you would be asking me something like this. Beautiful. Because I had a feeling you'd be asking me. Thank Look you. Look at this chart. These are healthier countries. Look where the United States is. I'm going to send this to RFK Jr. Look so at that. this is, uh, no. well, something along the I was actually talking to RFK today. and he. Look at Joe. Joe doesn't give a fuck about this chart. Joe's like, what do you even, I have a perfectly good Jamie sitting over there in the corner. What, what are you doing? Handing me this fucking piece of paper as if I'm some sort of like middle class stiff, you know? What the fuck is this? He told me that more than 70% of young men are ineligible for the military because of their health. I could see it. That's a lot crazy. Of a lot of it's obesity. So here's the life expectancy versus health expenditure. Same chart. Yeah. Did you see that? US That's how good Jamie is. See, Donald Trump can't even fathom it. That's how fucking quick Jamie is. Jamie Vernon, the fucking producing machine. This guy, I'm telling I do all this by myself. Like I the cameras, the audio, soundboards, like I'm switching the cameras, I'm controlling the computer, all this while I'm talking to you. Right? Like, so if Jamie was the one talking on the microphone, he'd be doing the same exact thing that I'm doing right now. That's how good Jamie is, and that's how good I fucking am, baby. You better understand that shit. You better get that through your head real goddamn quick, okay? Lost Ox Media is the greatest. Health. I could see it. Look that's at Jamie. crazy. A lot of it's obesity. So here's the life expectancy versus health expenditure. Same chart. Yeah. Did you see that? Look at Donald Trump. Same chart. Did you see that? Donald Trump can't believe his fucking eyes. Boom! His fucking head is going to explode. That's how good Jamie Vernon is. I'm telling you, you can't stop this guy. And watch this. D look, Jamie just got done, right, at, with pulling up this chart. And Donald Trump, watch what he does. That's what that is. But RFK is going to be very, you know, I, he, I think he's a great guy i, I think love the great. fact that you guys teamed up yeah and are you guys are you com completely committed to have him a part of your administration oh i am but the only thing i want to be a little careful about with him is uh the environmental 
because you know he doesn't like oil. I love oil and gas. I think you know. I think just keep him out of that to fire. So I'm going to sort of keep him out of a little. I said, focus on health. Focus. Yeah. You can do whatever you want, but uh, I got to be a little bit careful with uh, the liquid gold. You know. Well, what the fuck is that? Look, Donald Trump proving right here before I show you what he's about to do after this chart business. Proving right here that he's a businessman overall. Like, a true man after my own heart, you know? Because it's all money in here, baby. That's all I'm caring about. For someone who has very little of it, I care a lot about money. Okay? So, right here is Donald Trump's, like, proving, like, yeah, you know, RFK, we're going to bring him on for the health initiative, but we're going to keep him out of all that other shit, you know? Because we don't need him in there, like, you know, the biggest problem that we have with the oil is... Uh, he's Shut the fuck up, okay, RFK? We worry about granola bars and... and Making our kids healthy and, and getting them off of the uh, the Ozempis and all that other important shit, leave it up to me, okay? We're going to fix this goddamn country one dollar at a time. This is this is Donald Trump really showing you that he's, he's all about that oil, all about that money, baby. But remember, I'm bringing up this time code because of the chart. How Donald Trump comes in old school, doesn't realize Jamie can pull up charts. No, I understand. Um, but listen, there's plenty of good work that could be done if you focus on health. Here's so, the one that here's the one that my all time favorite dude, though. What look, is that? See the look at this guy. Right here, he brings up another fucking chart. I That's cannot I even believe it. Anyone that is pressuring you to not work. Look, and Joe, not giving a fuck about the chart. He puts it right down, stares right back at Donald Trump. Like, dude, but we're not here for that, bro. Like, I don't need these charts. I got Jamie. What are you talking about? Now, listen, Donald Trump still making fun of people. He's still going to be making fun of people. You know, we strayed away from that for a little bit. But, you know, Donald Trump, he likes to do the weave. You know, he'll be talking about one thing. He weaves off. And you think he's rambling. You think that you lost him because he starts to go off screen, you know. But then next thing you know, when you think the conversation's coming to a dead hall, he weaves back in and brings that subject right back in your fucking face. You know? You think that he's rambling. You think he's going off. He's just telling side stories. Like, he's taking a side quest away from the main mission, you know? But he's still going to go through with the main mission, which almost seemed to me like his main mission here was to just make fun of a bunch of people. Watch this. A lot of people say, will you do that? Will you do that to him? If, you, if to them, if you win, you know it's the presidency has tremendous power. I could have put crooked Hillary. I in respected jail. that you didn't because didn't. what you said was it would be bad for the country. No, I can't. I couldn't even imagine. You have, first of all, Secretary of State, but more importantly, the wife of the President of the United States of America going into jail. And if you ever saw when I'd say something about her, they'd all say I didn't say it. I never said it. They say lock her up, lock her, and I'd always go. Take it easy. Just relax. We're going to win this thing. Take it easy. Take it easy. And I'm telling you, I kept it down. Just the opposite. Now they say, oh, Trump wanted to put her in jail. No, I saved her from going to jail. They Now, <laughs> so now they're talking about when Trump was running against Hillary. And now everyone thought Donald Trump was going to put Hillary in jail. I'm not going to lie, myself included. Like, I mean, during their debate, she had said something like, yeah, I would do this, blah, blah, blah. And he kind of like straight up said to her, you wouldn't because when I get elected, you'd be in jail. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he's sitting there going like, I never said that. I never said that. I I'm, I don't know. You want to play a game of semantics. It sounds to me like you had said that in the past, you know, but that's beside the point. So he's sitting there saying that he actually wouldn't have arrested Hillary. You know, he actually saved her. Because apparently they had so much evidence on her that if it wasn't for him, they would have locked her ass up. That's what he's trying to sell to you right now. And he's about to sit there and make fun of the people that were defending her in that situation. Listen to this. He had more stuff on her. And Comey had it. Because when Comey got up, and he stupidly, because he's a stupid guy too, he goes, <laughs> he's a stupid son of a bitch. God damn. <laughs> Donald Trump coming. He's a stupid son of a bitch, that Comey. I'm pretty sure this Comey guy is like, uh, 
one of like the senior directors at the FBI or something like that. So he's basically saying like when this Comey guy was trying to like defend Hillary during these hearings that we were having, having to do with all of this stuff, the emails, all that that we were going to send her away with. This Comey guy was like really fucking up the whole case for her. They had more stuff on her and Comey had it because when Comey got up and he stupidly, because he's a stupid guy too, he goes, he's a stupid son of a bitch. Got him. <laughs> he got up, Joe, he got up and instead of saying she's innocent of all charges, he went over each charge and each charge was a killer. And he go, and as far as her doing this, She's innocent. And this, and then she's only an unfair prosecutor for it. We go, but every time you heard these charges, they sounded so bad. They right. were. See, so this is him. So I'll tell you why he called this guy a dumb son of a bitch. Because he's talking about when he was defending Hillary in these hearings, instead of just flat out saying Hillary's innocent, she didn't do anything, he actually listed out all of the charges individually and only on a select few, or I guess all of them, he went, on this one, she's innocent. On this one, she's innocent. On this one, she's innocent. What you're doing by reiterating all of those charges is you're kind of like, uh, you're like basing them harder into people's minds. You're like implanting them more into people's minds. You don't want people to keep hearing these kinds of bad things associated with your name. So this is why he's calling this guy a dumb son of a bitch. Instead of just going into the hearing and say, on all charges, she's innocent. He goes, nope, on this charge, she's innocent. And he says the whole goddamn charge. So now everyone in the hearing has to go, on the Russian collusion and Hillary deleting 10,251 emails, she's innocent. See how bad that sounded? See how bad that sounded? Like Because nobody's going to fucking care about the innocent part. They're just going to focus on the bad. It's the same kind of tactics that the news uses. You know, this is why every time you turn on the news, it's something bad. It's because that's the stuff that people focus on. So before we end up going to Trump's insane exit, I'm telling you, this guy had probably the greatest exit of any JRE guest that I've seen. Because this guy commands the shit. Like, once he got comfortable enough with Joe, remember I was telling you how they were kind of, like, touchy with each other because they know how how much both of them dicks are swanging, you know what I mean? So they're kind of being touchy with each other at first. But once Trump warms up to you, you know, he starts understanding you as a person, he starts to figure out how he can command the room. And that, that exit, I'm telling you, is great. But before we get into that exit, I want to show you Trump making fun of people yet again, this time going for Kambala. Okay, he's going for Kambala. We can't have corrupt elections and we can't have open borders. We need a we need you need to have a country. You need borders. You need fair elections. And I'll tell you the other thing you need is you need a free and fair press. One of the things I like about doing a show like this, can you imagine Kamala doing this show? She'd I be, could imagine her doing this laying, show. She'd I be laying on the floor. She was supposed to do it, and she might still she do it, and do I it. hope she does. She's not going to I do will it. talk to her like a human being. I would if try to have a conversation If she did this kind of an her. interview with you, I hope she does, because it would be a mess. She'd be <laughs> laying on the floor, Kamala does. She'd... What the fuck? God damn, dude. This guy... This guy, to sit there and say, she, Kamala, if she did this interview, you'd have her head spinning so goddamn hard, she'd be laying on the floor comatose. She, just out. Just done for. Joe hits her with one critical question, and it's going to fry her whole fucking hard drive. And this is the kind of shit that he's harping on. This is gold. This is comedy gold. This is uh, the stuff that people don't understand about Trump. They keep giving him... Like this, this bad uh, persona. This guy's just a comedian. He's not gonna. I will it. talk to her like a human being. I would if try to have a conversation with her. If she did this kind of an her. interview with you, I hope she does because it would be a mess. She'd be <laughs> laying on the floor comatose. She'd, you'd be saying, "Call in the medics." I think call in the call in the medics. He says, "God damn!" I love this. This is so fucking funny. I, and you know what's fucked up? This guy didn't drop this interview until like 11 p.m. on a fucking Friday. You know that? Like, Joe wanted everyone to watch. He wanted it to be dropped during like primetime hours. Primetime for who? 
fucking California. 11 o'clock. You know what I mean? I had all my show notes done for this recording. I record these on Saturdays. I had all my show notes done. And then I got to stay up till fucking four in the morning to watch this. I got to admit, it was worth it. So he's, uh, let's listen to that Kambala, that Kambala line one more time. And then I'll show you guys this exit, dude. This is great shit. I could imagine her doing this show. She would be try. laying on the floor. She was supposed to do it, and she might still she do it, and do it. I hope she does. She's not going to I will it. talk to her like a human being. I would if try to have a conversation with her. If she did this kind of an interview with you, I hope she does, because it would be a mess. She'd be <laughs> laying on the floor comatose. She'd, you'd be saying, call in the medics. I think... Call in the medics, he says. God damn, dude. That's gold. I'm telling you, that's gold. Now, watch this exit. This is kind of crazy, because normally... People get on JRE and they're so excited to be there. They don't want it to end. They know how much exposure they're going to get out of this. They know how much, if they're like a comedian, it might lead to ticket sales. If they're an author, it's going to lead to book selling out. If they got a movie, you better believe people are going to see it. People want to stay on there as long as they can. They want to get the exposure as long as they can. Donald Trump, not so much. The build up plan. Besides that, they're very rich companies. These chip companies, they stole, they stole ninety five percent of our business. It's in Taiwan right now. They do a great job, but that's only because we have stupid politicians. We lost the chip business, and now we think we're going to pay. You can't build it that way. You have to make them spend their money in the United States, and those plants would open up all over, and they'll fund them. We don't have to put up ten cents. And I am in the process of making a huge speech in about a little while. And you and I, how long have we been talking? A long time. Let's go. Probably like three hours. Look at that. This is what I was talking about. This is the shit that like Joe would never see. You never see this on JRE. You never see the guest tell Joe, let's go. Let's finish this. You never see that. And this, this is the only reason why I even made this time code for the ending is because this is like a once in a lifetime thing. Every single other person, no matter how famous they are, is going to sit there and say, you sure? You sure you don't want to go like for like four more hours? You know what I mean? This is the kind of, like every time, Joe's used to that energy. So Joe's probably like ecstatic about this. He's like, finally, somebody tells me it's over. You know, because Joe usually has to be the one to cut these things short. So it's it's so funny. Donald Trump, he goes, you know, uh, Taiwan, they're taking the chip business. They're taking all the chips, 95% of the business going to Taiwan. And I'm in the process of making a huge speech. And he looks over at you. How long have we been doing this? He's like, let's go. Let's end it. My people are outside waiting. I have a car. Uh, let's finish it. Make them spend their money in the United States. And those plants would open up all over. And they'll fund them. We don't have to put up 10 cents. And I am in the process of making a huge speech in about a little while. And you and I, how long have we been talking? A long time. Let's go. Probably like three hours. I, Let's go. I got to make a speech. All I, right. I, but we'll do it again. I want to do it again with you. Okay. You are something. They Thank said. I said, how long will this last? Anywhere from an hour to three or four How long hours. we do, Jamie? Three hours. Uh, good. Well, we'll do it again. I thought it was great. I think it's. I think it was great. It was a lot of fun. You are a fascinating guy. And uh, you've you. done a great job. Thank you very much. This Donald Trump, same guy, about maybe three months ago or so, was sitting there calling Joe a bitch on Truth Social. Saying something about like uh, Joe was endorsing RFK. So now Donald Trump fucking hates him. This is the shit that Donald Trump's saying to him now. You are a fascinating guy. And uh, you've you. done a great job. Thank I'm you a very big much. Fan, and thank you very much. It's been an honor. And it's been an honor to I'm have you I'm going to make well. a great speech, and I'm going to say, uh, and if I'm a little off tonight, I'm going to blame you. I'm going to say me. I spoke Go to ahead, this guy for me. three hours. Anyway, it's a great honor. Watch this. They don't even shake each other's hands after this. Donald, usually Joe shakes the person's hand. Watch this. Today. Thank you, sir. With you. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate All right. it. Bye, everybody. Such bullshit. Let's give it up. For Donald Trump on J-R-E. Gotta love that good old J-R-E, baby. You know, I thought that was a very interesting interview. I'm going to tell you right now, Joe, was not a big fan of the time. Next time, make that shit at like 6 in the afternoon. Everyone's off of work at 6.
okay? Make that shit at 6 in the afternoon so everyone can get, you know, a good kick out of it, all right? We don't need the the 11 p.m. episode drops. This is crazy, all right? People talk shit about these things like me. We need to keep production schedules on time. Thank you. Uh, going on to the next set of time codes, though, I guess we'll do a we'll do a kind of short one before we do our smoke slash music break. You gotta love the smoke slash music break, everybody. So uh, this next set of time codes we'll get into is Brianna Chicken Fry and Zach Bryan's breakup. So Brianna Chicken Fry, she's one of Dave Portnoy's co-hosts on the BFFs podcast, and if you are an avid listener to this show, you know that the BFFs podcast is probably my favorite show. This dummy. So that being said, it's kind of big news when someone like Brie ends up breaking up with their boyfriend. It's even bigger news when that boyfriend happens to be country music star Zach Bryan. Let's give it up for Zach Bryan one more time, ladies and gentlemen. This guy ends up completely fucking this girl's life up. You know, this guy broke up with her, not through text message, not through voicemail. He did it by posting on Twitter. He says to everybody in the world except for her, hey, me and Bri are broken up, everybody. And I'm sorry to tell you, it's all due to mental health issues. And Bree's reaction is not very good. She does not take this lightly. Let's get into that reaction. I'll show you guys exactly how devastated this Zach Bryan ended up making Brianna Chicken Fry. Fucked up shit. Hey guys, um, I look insane. I have my crazy lady robe on. Um, I'm on the bathroom floor. That is an insane way to start this. To just go, hey guys, like what the fuck? Hey guys, um, I look insane. I have my crazy lady robe on. Um, I'm on the bathroom floor. Something about a bathroom floor gives me a lot of comfort, so I've been sitting on a lot of bathroom floors the past couple of days. But, um, yeah, I'm probably not going to post this for a little while, but I just woke up to um, Zach posting on his Instagram that we broke up. and uh Oh, it was his Instagram. My bad. So Zach Bryan, this country music extraordinaire. I don't listen to country music, so if anyone's listening, you're a big country fan, Kill yourself, all right? Country music sucks, dude. I don't even understand why anyone listens to that bullshit. I mean, the closest you're going to catch me to listening to country is some good old Johnny Cash, baby. You know, ring of fire, burn, 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 you know, all that good shit. You're not going to catch me listening to some Zach fucking Brian. And if you got two first names like that, you cannot trust these people. I'm going to tell you that right now. Do not trust people with two first names, okay? Mike David, Zach Bryan. These are not people that you want to be trusting on a day-to-day basis, okay? Mike David was a joke. Of course, we love Mike David around here. We love Red Bar, okay? So this Zach Bryan guy, he ends up breaking up with her by just posting about it on Instagram. And now he's left this poor woman in this state. Um, I had no idea that post was going up. Uh, he didn't text me, he didn't call me. Um, I just woke up to a bunch of texts being like, are you okay? And I'm like, did my fucking dad die? Um, <laughs> and yeah, so I'm like completely blindsided by that. Um, I also genuinely feel like I haven't, like, do you see how swollen my face is? I've been crying for like five days straight. How's she crying for five days straight? She just found out this morning that they broke up. I don't understand that. This is the one thing that kind of confuses me with influencers a lot. Because, like, if you really pay attention to influencers, like, if you, honest to God, if you followed an influencer, like, a diehard fan would follow them, Instagram, Twitter, all you're following everything, you keep up with everything they do, and we know that these fans exist, right? It would be very easy for people to kind of like piece your life together. You know, they're all you're always posting where you are, what you're doing. And this was surprising enough to me. I found this out from watching the H3 show. You have any idea how easy it is for someone to look up your address? I didn't even know that. I thought that that was like very, very uh, like protected information. Apparently, it is like so easy for anyone to find your address. So she's sitting there saying right now, 
She's been crying for the past five days, but she woke up this morning and then found out about the breakup? See, this always confuses me. Influencers always fuck the timelines up like this. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that she's lying. I just kind of wanted to bring that point up because that's something that I noticed. I always notice these things that like nobody else gives a fuck about. And that was one of the things I noticed. Every time I follow these jamokes, you always hear certain things from them, but the, the posts and stuff don't line up. And of course, they're not posting and shooting in chronological order. I get that. It's still very easy based off of context and what you're listening to to put together the timeline of this happened first, this didn't happen first, blah, blah, blah. So I thought that was very weird. Then I thought it was even more weird or stranger or whatever the fuck you want to call it that she goes on to post this video and then goes on to say something like this. My privacy right now and like when I'm ready to talk about everything that happened, I will. But right now I'm just like completely blindsided. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and thank you for all the kind messages, um, I'm gonna be okay, I'm gonna be fine, I'm just obviously really, really hurt right now, um, and I wanted to just, like, be hurt for a week and, like, lay in bed, you know, and I just didn't want it to be public, so I'm just feeling blindsided she didn't want it to be public but we're posting a youtube video about it see so this is the kind of stuff that kind of throws me off with influencers and i have no gripe with it, brianna chicken fry okay it's just you have to point out when people are doing stupid shit it doesn't matter who they are okay so i have no problem with brie and i very very sincerely do feel bad about this breakup um, but that being said, it, it, not everything has to be public. And you're sitting there saying that you don't want it to be public. You're posting this video. Influencers do not have to make every, I stubbed my toe this morning while setting up for the production of this. Do I have to fucking make a whole episode about it? No. And I'm telling you, it hurt. It hurt a lot. Okay. Probably just as bad as you feel hurt right now. I'm, I'm not making a big deal out of it. Okay. And you, you see these influencers, they do this every time an issue comes around. They want to state an apology. They want to fucking go in there and be like, I'm heartbroken. Don't message me. Wink, wink. Like, come on, dude. If, if you really wanted to be private, then shut the fuck up and be private. Everyone in the world could know about your situation. You just have to sit there and be private. Don't answer the messages that come in. If people text you, Tell them that you'll talk to them later when you don't feel like when you feel a little better about dealing with their situation, but you don't want to talk about it right now. You don't have to be doing this whole I'm I'm just trying to be private. And then you post a video that gets thirty thousand fucking views. Yeah, I love you guys a lot. Um thank you to all the kind people and thank you, I mean genuinely just to everyone reaching out to me. I'm not answering shit today, so I'm not dead. I'm just going to go lay down and fucking, I don't know, watch Love is Blind. That's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Regardless, everything is going to be okay. I um, I just don't want to talk about it. So please don't make videos about this. And please don't like make videos about me. Just wait till I come back and talk about it. Can you give me fucking that? No, we can't. You fucking idiot. This is what I'm saying. If you don't want people like me to make videos about this, then shut the fuck up and don't post them. This, I found this to be insane when she said this. We get it. You're going through a breakup. You have to learn how the internet works. How long have you been on this shit? Like, does Barstool just, is it just consist of like all retarded employees that, that like can't seem to get their lives together and and they don't know like when they sound like hypocrites or what they're doing is like completely stupid is that what's happening here like do i just do you just have to be completely moronic to work at a company like that and once again we love brianna over here okay we love brianna over here we don't like this you want to be private? Be private. Don't sit there and blast it on the internet and try to make it seem like uh, 
people are the bad guys for making videos about you. It's called clicks, man. Everyone's trying to make a living off of them, including yourself. And I bet that video is monetized. So why would you say some shit like that, Bree? Why would you post some shit like that? Makes no sense. So oddly enough, the last episode we covered BFF's podcast, right? And during that time of recording, this breakup had not happened yet. So Bree seemed completely fine. They actually even made a uh, like a little note about it and stuff like that. Now, Dave has another show that he does with two other guys from Barstool called The Unnamed Show. This one I just found out about, and I'm telling you, I'm going to be tuning in like a gangbusters, dude, because this one is more Dave specific, you know? Like with BFFs, I like Bree and uh, and Liam Payne. They're cool, but I like Dave better. You know, that's why I'm watching BFFs. Now, this unnamed show, yeah, it's got with two other guys, but it's more around like what Dave is doing. It's more Dave speed. So Dave is kind of like the prominent figure in this show, and I love that. Now, I go and turn on this unnamed show, and... What are they talking about? They're talking about Brianna Chicken Fry's breakup. And the stuff that Dave has to say about it is fucking gold. Wait until you hear exactly who this Zach Bryan guy is. Like, Dave knows stuff about him that not everybody knows. And, of course, Bree knows a lot about him that not everybody knows. So next week, we're going to be doing a lot of time codes on the BFF show. Keep that in mind. That's going to be the first time Bree talks about it on air like that, except for this whatever the fuck that was that we just watched. Now, listen to Dave I understand, but you talk could... about Zach Bryan because he does not like him. It's a story to tell. It's not my story. It's not my story to tell. I understand, but you, the problem is you can't. You, you went so far in that you kind of had to tell the story. But I, I appreciate you. Have, this any- part- so now there, just to contextualize this real quick, and I'll let it play. They, they, brought, they brought up the breakup, and Dave's like, I can't tell you that story because I do a podcast with Bree. It's her story to tell. And these guys are trying to neg at him for it, right? And when they first brought it up, Dave had said to the producer, why don't you see if you can clear it with Bree? Text her or something while we're talking, and we'll see if we can clear the story. But... They haven't heard back from Bree. So these guys are just like nagging him and nagging him and nagging him, trying to get him to tell a story that rightfully is not his to tell. He probably, he probably had his this story that good. Am I, re- am I hyping it up too much? Yeah. Is it a good story? I think it'll tell a lot about him. I don't know. That's a spectacular story, but, but it's, I, it's, uh... it, it, it's something that happened. I'll just say this. <laughs> it's a. Okay. We don't want to hear this. I'll just say this bullshit. All right. So I'll, we're going to get to it. Dave, he, okay, I'll just say this. He wants to say some stupid shit that's like going to give you just a little bit of information, but he can't tell the whole story. We don't need that. We want the whole story. So now they keep talking about other stuff, but every now and then these two other guys are like, well, Dave likes BFFs better, and he's not going to tell the story. The producer catches on to this. He looks at his phone. And he says, oh, wait a minute. I got a text from Bree. Bree says that you can tell the story, Dave. So now, Dave tells the story. Let's listen to this. This is actually kind of crazy. You can tell the Vegas right. story. Oh, I can't tell the Oh, story. wow. Nice, nice, nice. Go ahead. So, Go Bree. wait until you hear. If, you, if you're a fan of Zach Bryan, I'm going to tell you that right now. After listening to these two very small stories about him, mind you, this guy has a whole career, a whole life. I'm sure there's a hundred stories like this. When you hear Dave tell these two stories, if you if you remain a Zach Bryan fan after this, you're retarded. Okay? Listen to how big of a pussy this fucking country music star is. Okay, so the story goes. Thank you, Austin. This is, we were at the Super Bowl. Zach Bryan is performing, uh, and Josh Richards, who we do BFFs with, we were going to go. To- oh, his name is Josh Richards. I, uh, I've i been calling him Liam Payne this whole time. To his concert, meet Bree, go. And I'm uh, texting him. I'm like, hey, Bree, what time are we meeting up to go? Uh, 
she's not getting back to me. Finally, she calls me and goes, I, I don't know how to say this. I have bad news. I'm like, what? He's like, Zach has banned you from going to the concert. Listen to this bullshit. So this is a already a very juicy story. And remember, Dave, like just a second ago, was like, it's not really all that spectacular of a story. This is the greatest story I've ever fucking heard. So he's saying they're getting ready to go to this Zach Bryan concert. Bree's probably already there. She's in the dressing room. She's backstage. She's hanging out. So Dave and and Josh, the other co-host of BFFs, they have to coordinate that. So they're texting Bree back. Where are we supposed to meet? Where's the when's the car coming? You know, what what entrance are we going in? These are the types of things that you need to know when you're a, a public figure of Dave's stature. So she texts back and says, I'm sorry to tell you this, but Zach Bryan has banned you from going to any further concerts, including this one. What the fuck kind of shit is this, right? Out of nowhere. So this is a very, very bold move for as a boyfriend because you're doing this to your girlfriend's boss, her coworker, and her co-host. She has to talk to this guy every week. And this is how weak-minded guys like this will try to manipulate situations on their girlfriends. I'll explain to you. He knows that by doing something like that, he's not he's not affecting her directly. But he's trying to go out of his way to make her life a lot more difficult than it has to be. And the reason why will shock you because it's not even something that she did. Listen to this. I'm like, what? Like, ban for what? Apparently, Zach went back like how many months was it it had to be maybe six months a lot we at one time on bffs had uh a discussion i got two stories that'll come up that'll change it. a discussion and where Bree just got a new boyfriend I'm like whoa that's like her third boyfriend in fairly like a couple of months i'm like you're evolving door boyfriends lately he saw that clip six months prior and banned us from going to the concert are you listening to the, are you listening to the same story that I'm listening to? Zach Bryan, country music extraordinaire, millionaire. I and I'm telling you, I don't like country music, but you've seen these corn-fed bitches running around these concerts. This guy could be doing just fine. And he's that insecure. What is happening here? Why Why would Brie or any girl in their right mind want to put up with something like this? I mean, you could be the greatest country music singer in the world. You have to have enough self-respect and enough willpower to not want to put up with this stupid shit. So we got to get Brie a different boyfriend, all right? Now listen to this. This is just one story. The stories actually get worse. Bree was like, it's the first biggest fight we've been in. I'm like, this is what we do. Like, we joke and like, what are you mad about? So that was the first sensitive. The second sensitive, which now they got the green light. Fast forward, Bree goes to like the Golden Globes and Zach's not there. And I think Bree, I'm paraphrasing, was interviewed on the red carpet. Like, anybody you're excited to meet? And it was some famous, like, awesome-looking celebrity. And I think she's like, oh, he's good-looking. Or, like, yeah, he, he looks oh, nice. Geez. Oh, boy. He, so you hear the guys, the co-hosts, they already know. Like, they hear, because of the first story that they heard, now they have an understanding of who this Zach Bryan guy is. So they hear that Bree was on the red carpet and said some other celebrity was hot. They both know that the walls are about to come down off of this shit. So they're, they're prepping themselves. They're like, God damn, I could only imagine the reaction this guy had off of that. And I think she's like, oh, he's good looking. Or like, yeah, he, he looks oh, nice. Geez. Oh, boy. He, Here we go. He, he unfollowed Brie on social, blocked BFFs. Like, you insecure baby. Like, she's on the gold, like the red carpet being interviewed. So he just seemed like a really immature not confident baby. And then when I've been around, like he was nice to us at the concert, but off, like his vibes were just, <clears throat> he was so over the top, nice. Like, you, thank you so much for coming. It means the world to me that you. No, it don't. It don't mean shit. 
this dummy. This is what this is so funny. This is like the uh, once again the signs of a very weak-minded man. Brianna Chicken Fry is going to be miles apart better off for not being with this guy. She just doesn't see it yet. This is what's sad about about people like Bree, not even just women. It's people like this. When they start to feel because think about it, if that guy is that insecure, right? And she is, you know, I I guess foolish enough would be the word. If she's foolish enough to stay with him and deal with all of that stuff on a regular basis, what does that say about her confidence level? You know? You have to you have to take care of yourself first and foremost, folks. We cannot be hanging around with immature busters like this. This is not the way, okay? We're going to find Bree a different boyfriend. But first, we're going to listen to more Zach Bryan shit. Listen to this guy. You thought that him, you know, digging at his girlfriend was bad? This guy is just an all-around shit person. So he hears Bree say something on the red carpet. He unfollows her from... You're still dating the girl. You unfollow her from Instagram. You block her podcast on social media. You start doing all the, you start burning like just scorched earth shit off of something that small and insignificant. That not only like it just makes you a bad boyfriend. You might be like a good guy in other senses, but like you're just a you're a bad boyfriend, right? But that kind of that kind of shit doesn't just say that about you. It says that about your character in general, right? Like people might sit there and classify he's just a bad boyfriend. No, you're a bad dude. And Dave's about to sit here and solidify that fact for us right now. You can tell the Vegas uh, story. Oh, I... Wrong time code. Jesus, I'm fucking up today, huh? There you go. All right, so, so you did tell the story. Yes. There you go. Okay. All right. I think banning me from the concert on a joke like... Well, it's crazy. The year before is pretty fucking insane. I agree, but I'm saying if you're if you're with this guy and he does all that, that's oh that's... another story. I'm starting to lose. Oh. When I went to his concert, I thought it was very strange. And musicians may say, say differently. He 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 had his own dressing room, and his band was all smushed into this little one. And I thought that was oh, weird. Yeah, that's not a team guy. No. Yeah, not, that's. A, it, it, I would, and, listen to that, folks. This is this is your Zach Bryan. This is the one that all you Zach Bryan fans out there that love this guy so fucking much, you know, this is the kind of guy that he is. He he feels that self-important. Actually, it might not even be him feeling that self-important. This might be another sign of insecurity that he feels like people would look at him as if he wasn't this top dog if he was in a dressing room with the rest of the band. You, I, I'm Zach Bryan. My name is on the flyer. My name is on the kiosk, on the marquee. I'm selling the tickets. So how bad of a look would it be if I was just in the dressing room with the rest of the band? We do not need that around here, okay? Zach Bryan gets his own dressing room. The rest of these guys can sit in a fucking broom closet for all I care. This is who this guy is. And like I said before, I honestly feel like Bree is going to be a better woman for not being with him. But we have to find her a boyfriend, right? We have to find her a boyfriend, one that's going to take care of her, treat her right, and most importantly, make her laugh. That's what we need. And I ended up finding a clip of someone that I think would be a very, very suitable suitor for Brie. His name is Theo Vaughn. Watch this clip right here. Yeah. Um, Theo likes Brie, question mark? Theo likes Brie, question mark? Oh, okay. What are we about to watch here? Because if Theo likes Brie, I'm sure he still likes Brie. We might be able to hook them up. Dang. What's this? That's a weird. You just had Brianna chicken fry on, actually. Look at this fucking twink. Look at this guy, Josh Richards. I'm sorry, we have to stop to just take a moment to look at this fucking guy. This dude with this light purple, like with this like an in sync look that he's got going on here. He's got light purple highlighted spiked up hair. Exactly the same type of shit you'd see in a Backstreet Boys music video back in the day. 
This guy drinks milk after playing full ass games of basketball. He cannot be trusted. I'm just gonna say that now. Let's listen to Theo Vaughn in this clip. What's this? That's a little weird. You just had Brianna Chicken Fry on, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's uh, she's interesting. What do you mean? She's interesting, boy. She's got them <laughs> tits, boy. Sorry. God damn, Theo. What the fuck what is the fuck? T I T? So this guy starting off strong. Look at that face. We have to we have to so you already heard the line. He said, Yeah, she's interesting. She's got them tits. Mm. Yeah, she got them tits. <laughs> but watch his face when he does this. Yeah, she's uh, she's interesting. What do you mean? She's interesting, boy. She's got them. Look at this. This guy is he's fucking unhinged you get theo a, a pair of tits you get theo in the room with a girl and he's gonna start fucking having all these crazy deranged thoughts in his mind remember the last time we talked about theo i was telling you how it's like you listen to this guy's podcast every three months he's gonna get on that mic and go i'm about 29 days off porn you know my I, I i just get so conflicted with my inner self and I'm fighting with demons inside my body. And I'm constantly trying to exercise them through my dick. So I need to get these demons out. But what the good Lord has told me is that three squirrels in a jumpsuit will set you free. So I've been giving up porn for about three months now. You know, this is every three, every fucking time you turn on this, every other episode. This guy's talking about giving up fucking porn. Right? Now he sit there and has this face on while talking about... This poor woman that he just had on his show. Tits, boy. Sorry. T I T. I didn't say it, but there's a part of me inside of me that said it. Sometimes there's a party that comes to the surface and he's like, guess what I'm going to say? Yeah, she, well, she got him done. Yeah, she did. Boy, I'd freaking do him, dude. I freaking do him, dude. I freaking do the shit out of him, dude. Listen to that. And look at her face while he's saying all this. She's like, dude, I've been like. Like her whole, the whole episode that she did with Theo Vaughn, you might as well classify that as a rape. This girl has been sexually assaulted. She knows it. Look at this. Theo Vaughn. Look at the face on him. I, I didn't say it, but there's a part of me inside of me that said it. Sometimes there's a party that comes to the surface and he's like, guess what I'm going to say. Yeah, she, well, she got him done. Yeah, she did. Boy, I'd freaking <laughs> do him, dude. You give me fucking half hour and some of that Michelangelo clay or whatever. I'd fucking put a third one on there. Dude, the way he says that, listen to how he says, well, I fucking put a third one on there. He's like fucking about to break his teeth because he like clenches his jaw so much when he says that. It's the same thing. Like you ever get that like weird feeling when you go to like pet a cat or something? You you kind of want to squeeze the fuck out of them. You don't do it, obviously, but you just get that urge that you're like, this thing is like so cute that I just want to like, oh, and fucking hug the shit out of it. And that kind of urge that you get, you feel your body tensing up kind of. And that's kind of like the same urge that we're seeing on Theo's face while he's talking about Brie and these fucking fake tits. Look at this. Some of that Michelangelo clay or whatever. I'd fucking put a third one on. See, he, I fucking put a third one on there. That is creepy as fuck. Favorite, he's very, huh? he's very no. infatuated by your tits, eh? It's a tough clip. Yeah. It's a tough clip, Dave. It's a tough clip, you know? But I'm telling you, despite all that, I think Theo would be a good boyfriend. And for that, we love him, you know? Of course. So let's uh let's go ahead and get ready yeah, to turn on to not overly surprised. No, no, no. Shut the fuck up. We're not listening to you anymore, guys. Let's get ready to turn on some music, right? And uh, spark up that J so we could start our little smoke break. Uh oh. What's this gonna be? Very interesting. I'd like to thank you again for joining me on yet another episode of Lost Ox Media, where we make you take a second look at what you just watched. Let's spark up that J, listen to a little bit of music and have ourselves a good old smoke break before we get into this next set of time codes with our favorite Jamokes.
Don't go anywhere, folks. We got some good time codes coming up with some good old Jamokes. We still got Sean Evans from Hot Ones interviewing probably the worst guest he's interviewed in a long time. This was actually psychotic. Then we got KSI and Logan Paul acting like fucking idiots on another episode of Impulsive. And of course, we got Ethan Klein still crashing out over Stan Piker. All of that and more on Lost Ox Media. Let's have a couple more hits, listen to that music, and get back into it. gonna lie that jay got me a little hot man i'm starting to sweat a little bit you know i have to turn off the fans and stuff when we're recording so doesn't make for the coolest environment you throw a long sleeve shirt on that bitch you might as well call it a day okay so you know we got that going for us but let's get into uh our what's eating ethan klein segment you know we'll we'll get back from the smoke break and start up with that one right good old what's eating Ethan Klein. It's the week segment. Let's give it up for the week segment, ladies and gentlemen. Of course. So, last week during our week segment, see, I, I need a towel or something. I'm sweating. Last week during our week segment, Ethan was crashing out real hard over these Hassan Piker streams, you know? And he was really reaching to kind of make these points, you know? He's Showing us, we we got our exposure to the Houthi musical. You guys remember Houthi the musical? That was a very good one. And we got, uh, you know, he showed us that good old Call of Duty mission. We talked about some One Piece, you know. Yeah, Hassan's streams were a little bit, you know, edgy or whatever. But for Ethan to sit there and victimize himself and say, he's being anti-Semitic. The world is anti-Semitism is on the rise. And I'm being affected by it. That's... Kind of like what I saw when I watched those episodes, right? And you would think, okay, let's just do one episode of this. And it was a rough one. I'm going to tell you right now, it was a rough episode. You would think, okay, we do one episode of this. That's going to be it, you know? Let Ethan get it out of his system. Wrong, okay? This guy still doing episodes about this stuff even after the fact. And oddly enough, this next one kind of... and and. It ends up being about Hassan and the CEO of Twitch, this guy, uh, Dan Clancy. So Dan obviously runs Twitch. He's the CEO. Hassan, probably one of the biggest streamers on the platform. So they probably, at the very least, know each other, right? Ethan starts doing these streams, and this Dan Clancy guy starts making moves over at Twitch, Right after the streams come out, almost seems like he's doing it to spite Ethan, and Ethan doesn't like it. And that's where we get yet another episode of Ethan flailing. Let's check this out. Hey, what a All right, so here's here's what's gonna happen. Um, Wednesday we had a, a pretty heavy show there where we I talked about how why how I thought Hassan, while not being an anti-Semitic person himself, was proliferating and aiding anti-Semitism to spread on the platform. And Friday, we had a really fun, um, really fun episode about Twilight. And, you know, I wanted to do a really fun episode about Twilight today, but blame it on the anti-Semites. Blame, blame it on the anti-Semites, he said. He wanted to do another fun episode about Twilight, but he can't because the anti-Semites, because it's Ethan's duty to stop them, you know? 
If if not Ethan, then who will? You know, you can't just let these anti-Semites run around the world, you know, taking over everything. And then where are the Jews going to go? You know, you we got to keep keep balances and checks in this shit. And Ethan's here to take care of all that. It doesn't have to be this way. Now, I brought this time code up. It was a very short time code. The reason I brought that up is because he's sitting there trying to say that he has to do this when he doesn't. You don't have to put your audience through this again. You don't have to to sit there and put a b through this again you want to do this because you seriously are victimizing yourself on like a fucking grand scale the likes that we've never seen before okay and this is something that's not going to sit well with the internet i don't know how this guy doesn't realize this shit by now watch and now i noticed also over the weekend that the houthi pirate kid the terrorist yes was also un oh wait not this one so this is kind of a weird drama, but so he was, oh yeah, this is it. He was unbanned. The Houthi fucking pirate terrorist kid was unbanned. They want him on Twitch. They want him. This is fucking crazy, right? So the, I'll, I'll, if you don't know from the context of the last episode, I'll fill you in. So one of the biggest gripes that Ethan had with these Hassan streams was the fact that he was interviewing this like hot Houthi pirate. They People online were calling this kid like Tim Houthi Chalamet because this this Houthi guy was so good looking. You know, he's very young, like 20 something years old, very strapping looking young lad. But you got to understand this guy is like kidnapping people. He's taking over cargo ships the whole night. Right. Ethan has a problem with this. So that's what he's bringing up. When he brought up that problem that he had with those interviews, he also brought up the fact that the Houthi guy got banned off of Twitch. And that Hassan's interviewing this derelict who isn't even allowed on the platform and he's giving him a voice again. That Ethan also had a problem with. Now, since Ethan's stream criticizing Hassan, Dan Clancy, the CEO of Twitch, has unbanned this Houthi pirate. And that's what Ethan's bitching about right now. Tell me that that is not that guy trying to spit Tui in Ethan's face. Fucking pirate terrorist kid was unbanned they want him on twitch they want him on twitch that's crazy he has two channels one is his throwaway wait no this is just his main channel okay and this is an intentional choice by someone at twitch to say i want this kid unbanned yeah it's an intentional choice they are intentionally fucking with you. that this is what they want to do because you sit in there criticizing these fucking people. Yeah, it's it's fair game. It is fair game. I'm criticizing you. It's fair game. I understand that part. But I understand criticizing someone like Ethan. Let's say these videos happen to come across his stream. He's going to talk shit about him. He's going to talk shit about me. His fans are probably going to come over here and drove, start fucking reporting. All sorts of stuff. I understand that risk. I understand what I'm doing in criticizing someone like you. He does not understand that his criticisms spread a lot further than mine. And that, yeah, when the people that he's criticizing are going to see it and they're going to react to it. And this is Twitch's reaction to him. And I find that to be very funny. But you thought, you, you thought, okay, maybe, maybe uh, Twitch is being a little crazy. Maybe Ethan's criticisms weren't even that hard on Twitch and the CEO of Twitch. Maybe they're taking it out of proportion and they're kind of doing something a little drastic by unbanning people like the Houthi pirate. You might be saying that to yourself too. That's not true. These are Ethan's criticize or these are Ethan's criticisms of people like Dan Clancy. Dan Clancy is a pathetic excuse of a leader. Like this man just is literally running a shit show. Thanks, Dan. And I kind of jokingly said that I think Dan Clancy is anti-Semitic in our last episode, but I'll just, I'm downright convinced that this man hates Jewish people. See, this is what I'm talking about right here. You cannot say that kind of stuff and not expect repercussions to it, right? Like, you, he, he wants to sit there and say stuff just like this and then not expect anything to happen back, right? And remember... Remember when I said to you last episode, he said stuff like this 
about YouTube CEO as well, which is a very bold move. Don't be surprised if in the next couple of weeks to months, you don't start hearing stuff about Ethan bitching about how YouTube is treating him. That would not surprise me in the slightest. You cannot say stuff like this, get like anywhere between 30 to 50,000 people watching live, get anywhere between 125K to 500K to a million views per, va uh, per episode and expect people not to retaliate at your bullshit. This is the stuff that I'm talking about. There's really, that's like the, the only explanation to account for everything I'm about to show you guys. <coughs> so the Houthi kid was, was unbanned after I did my video. And now that this new thing is happening, there's like lots of controversy now with a Twitch panel that Frogan did. A lot of Frogan stuff. She made a Twitch panel where she, a lot of people, including myself, felt was deeply anti-Semitic. And then she went on Twitch and said that all veterans should get PTSD, which, uh, so there's lots of, I, oh, and then they banned Israel. It, it, there's then they banned Israel. We're going to get on that a little bit later. There's a whole lot. But now that there's actually eyeballs and media talking about it, then all of a sudden he's banned again. Okay. So now Ethan's talking about how they banned the Houthi pirate because people started bitching about it once they heard like, oh, Twitch banned, uh, they unbanned this guy. So they started complaining. They started complaining, right? And this is the shit that I'm talking about. He, he's, he's, he's sitting there taking huge digs at someone and then he's getting upset because it would not surprise me in the slightest if this CEO actually saw Ethan stream or like a clip from it and went, hey, you know what? Unban the, unban the pirate. As a matter of fact, don't just unban the pirate. Unban Sneeko. Un unban the other guys too. Let's let the floodgates out because this guy fucking sucks and I would like to see him squirm a little bit. I'd like to see him really, really take one on the fucking chin. After putting out a stream like that, criticizing me the way he did, Ethan's just going to get upset about it. Now, this time code's a very funny one because he sits there and watches like Hassan's reaction to it. He's not reacting like to the stream itself, but he's talking to his friend about the stuff that Ethan was saying about him. And Ethan, once again, starts getting pissed off about it and kind of flailing a little bit. Watch this. Uh. I don't know who it so is. So I think today where he's it's talking about. It's a full about, episode. Oh yeah, he my dedicated God. an entire podcast episode, I think. First of all, scumbags, we talked about Ecobi. First of all, scumbags, we talked about Ecobi. See what I'm saying here? See how this is like, uh, it's so hypocritical on his end because he's sitting there calling people scumbags, right? What? Think about the last time you called somebody a scumbag. Think about how much animosity you had behind that, right? Like, I call people lots of names, lots of very derogatory, un, like, not politically correct names, you know? I call Tony Hinchcliffe gay every goddamn episode. But to say, like, scumbag, like, you fucking scumbag, you know what I mean? It's kind of like you're pulling that one out of, like, the depths of hell, you know, when you're throwing that one at people. And this is the kind of stuff, like, if Hassan was on his stream and turned to his friend and said, this scumbag dedicated an entire podcast episode to hating on my streams, which he did. Let's not forget that. Ethan legitimately dedicated, like, two and a half hours out of a three-hour stream for him complaining about Hassan and how he's being victimized with anti-Semitism, right? So he did that. And now he's sitting there calling his son a scumbag and saying that he did not do that. This episode, I think, first of all, scumbags, we talked about Ecobi. See how long he had to pause to think about that? What else did we talk about that episode? I don't even remember because the whole thing was about me. Also, and to make them, a, yeah, a Kobe. And to make a Kobe into like what, a nothing segment is literally... These people are fucking punting. You might as well just punt, drop kick this baby, this pygmy hippo. See what I'm saying? Now he's trying to jokingly make Hassan look worse by saying, oh, you might as well punt this, this baby. 
Nobody gives a fuck about the hippo, first of all, okay? We're all on Mudang, okay? If the hippo ain't Mudang, nobody gives a shit about it, okay? Let me tell you that right now. So he's sitting there trying to defend himself over this. He's sitting there trying to say, we didn't make a whole two-hour stream, right? They did. Now he wants to sit there and do the hypocrite game one more time. He wants to sit there and talk about how radical it is that Hassan is doing these things and saying these things and having these thoughts, right? I don't need, like, the ins and outs of it are lost on me. But this is where Ethan's at. He wants to sit there and point fingers and say, this guy is radical, but wait until you hear how he delivers it. Like, this, this, is, ra this is the thing. This is radical shit. This is not normal shit, okay, to sit here and tell Israelis to move and go somewhere else. Like, this is not normal. Do you guys understand this? Twitch has normalized this type of discourse, and that's the problem. This is not fucking normal. This is extraordinarily um, radical. You see that? You see what I'm talking about here? Now, he wants to sit there and go, these guys are radical. This is not normal. This is... This is, what's, what's the word? What's the word that I'm looking? Radical! This is, and he's saying it like he's about to lose his goddamn mind. We got a 5150 this. FBI, open up! He is legit. This is what I'm saying. I keep saying the word flailing, but it's very hard to describe it as anything else. You know? You sitting here watching him do this, acting the way he's doing, what other way would you have to describe it? It's legitimately, that's what it is. He's flailing like crazy over this shit. Listen to him do this one more time. It's radical. He starts screaming. Who's ra who's the radical one here? A ask yourself that. We just saw Hassan react to it. This is Ethan reacting to that. Who's the radical one? Analyze this type of discourse. And that's the problem. This is not fucking normal. This is extraordinarily um, radical. Right? Look, look at his face. He's about to go off again. He's about to go off again. Let's, I was going to end the time code here. Let's see what comes out of his mouth. It's a face like that, probably something pretty radical. And can you find a single voice on Twitch that, ver that like varies from Hassan's like talking points by even 1%? Can you even find one person on Twitch that would say, who's a political commentary person that would say, you know, I don't think kicking out uh, 8 million uh, Jewish people is actually a, a, a good solution. Because they That sounds pretty radical. To generalize a whole entire platform like that sounds pretty radical, right? Like, th let's think about it. Adolf Hitler, what did he do? He generalized your people, right? And he made everyone think that they were bad by generalizing them. By saying all of them are like this, right? And this is what Ethan's doing now. He's he's kind of partaking in his own persecution. Like, not not a persecution of himself, but a persecution of an entire platform of people that, that are trying to make a living off of it. He's sitting there saying they're all the same. Every single one of them is like Hassan. So we might as well just nuke the whole fucking platform. Goodbye. This is kind of what I'm hearing when I when I see this. And it doesn't get any better. You thought that was an outburst? You thought that was crazy? Wait until you see him act like this. You know, in my whole life, I've never screamed foul on anti-Semitism. I literally have been getting this shit since the second I stepped foot on the internet. And I have never fucking ever done this. OK, so the people online, they're saying, oh, Ethan's making himself a victim or Ethan's uh, making everything about anti-Semitism. I have never I've done this once in my life right now. Remember that. I want you to remember that because we're about to bust this thing wide open. Let's listen to him go off on that one more time because I got something to show you afterwards, baby. Listen to this guy. I have never I have never even caught foul on anti-Semitism. You know, in my whole life, I've never screamed foul on anti-Semitism. I literally have been getting this shit since the second I stepped foot on the internet. And I have never fucking ever 
done this. Okay, so the people online, they're saying, oh, Ethan's making himself a victim or Ethan's uh, making everything about anti-Semitism. I have never I've done this once in my life right now. That's bullshit. And I'm going to show you why right now. So Ethan claims that he's never done this before. Right. He's been online for years and he's dealt with anti-Semitism the whole time. But he has never went on his show, complained about someone doing something anti-Semitic <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, therefore dedicated an entire show or an entire segment to it. He's never gone crazy on this anti-Semitism rant and this victimization of himself the way he has now in his whole time on being on the internet. Now, I'm going to show you right now that that's a bold-faced lie with this little issue that he was having with Trisha Paytas. Good. <laughs> That Hari Krishna fake ass <laughs> can go f herself. Yeah. Oh my god. Ooh. <laughs> Delete me from this conversation. Oh. Yeah, the mask is go. off. I don't give a shit. In fact, since the embargo's lifted. Oh boy. Let me just show you what the f she's been up to that is actually just straight up fing anti Semitism. What is that word? Did you guys hear that? Did you hear that? Am I hearing things? Let's go back one more time. The f she's been up to that is actually just straight up fucking anti Semitism, like mask off anti Semitism. Uh, hold on. During Hanukkah, she was doing these. Hear this one. Okay. You want to see? Well, okay. You can mute it. <clears throat> okay. So it's like Hanukkah, oh Hanukkah, come light them and art, whatever. So she goes, when you can't finish conversion classes, so you just pay to be Jewish. <clears throat> Oof. What? I don't know about you, but that fucking rocks. Like, think about it. Think about how this is like a instant gratification. They, this, nobody wants to wait for shit anymore. Okay? So, if yeah, if my goal was to be Jewish, I'm going to pay someone to do that. I'm not studying for that shit. So now tell me, is she... Being anti-Semitic, or is she actually being Jewish? Like, like she's using money to take care of her problem, right? I mean, that's the most Jewish thing I've ever fucking heard. So, I mean, is she being anti-Semitic, or is she like being like the most Jewy Jew that you can be? I have no idea. Finish conversion classes, so you just pay to be Jewish. <clears throat> Oof! What the? F that's yeah, a, that's awful. Yeah, so you want to uh, you want to hear my thoughts on this shit? You want to hear my thoughts on this shit? Now he's about to start going off, right? This is an old episode. They're they're not even at that same studio anymore. But Ethan's never done this before. This is just more of this like hypocrite type behavior, right? You know, this is the the same kind of shit that we're seeing. Now watch, I'm I'm not the only one that seems to think Ethan is playing the victim card here. There are other creators, a lot bigger than myself, sitting there talking about how Ethan's being a victim. This guy ended up making a, a whole video on his Ethan Klein channel, which haven't seen activity in like years. I think maybe like a full year it's been since that video, as that channel has posted a video, right? He's just been posting everything on the H3 channel. He goes on his own personal channel, makes a whole video about this Twitch panel and how it's anti-Semitic and how, like, you know, it's it's so wrong. It probably is. Right. One, uh, okay. Cool. It's wrong. Nobody's disputing that. But once again, the whole video was him victimizing himself and he put it on his own personal channel. That's how big of an issue this is to him. It's eating away at him so bad that even in his personal life, he cannot let it go. That, that to me sounds like you're trying to make yourself a victim. And these creators that I was talking about, they're catching on. And this is the part that really is like interesting about Twitch. These people have now gone live. They're watching the clip and, react and laughing about how unapologetic they are about it. And that's on Twitch now, right now. <laughs> this is a good reaction. Ooh, that was a good one. <laughs> That's, oh, that's Jewish. <laughs> You're such a victim, dude. <laughs>
Could it be that people don't like me because I am an unlikable person? No, it must be that I'm Jewish. <laughs> this is the greatest. This girl. Let's give it up to her. I don't even know. Who's that? Pokimane? Was that Pokimane doing that? You know? That's, that's good shit right there. So, once again, this whole stream is about the CEO of Twitch and how he's such an anti-Semite, right? And remember I was telling you after the CEO of Twitch heard that, he unblocked this Houthi pirate guy. And you thought I was joking about the Sneeko stuff. No. He started unblocking Sneeko. He started unblocking all these people that Ethan hates, right? This is, it has to pass through the CEO. Like, yeah, there might be somebody making those decisions underneath him, but he's aware of them. And if anything, he's signing off on them. You better believe that shit. So this is like, to me, it seems like he's poking back at Ethan. And you could potentially think, no, nah, he's probably just trying to do like a whole Elon Musk X, X type thing where he's like, let's let everybody speak, right? Wrong. Wait until you hear what happens and next with this fucking Twitch CEO. And then it comes out. <coughs> this is the huge story that's breaking today. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Fresh and Fit and Sneeko got rebanned. Which just begs, it really... See, so this guy, he unbanned all these people and then just rebanned them again because everybody started talking about it. But to me, it just seems like he did it just to get at Ethan because he knew he was going to have to ban them again. Nobody was going to be cool with that. But that happened when, when people started. I think. Oh, they also. Did that just happened. Uh, Sneeko also got rebanned on YouTube. He got like. I don't know what's fucking going on. Sneeko was unbanned on YouTube during the weekend. And then, like, this morning, he was rebanned again. Uh, yesterday, Sneeko banned from YouTube again within 24 hours of unban. <laughs> what is happening? On a winning streak here. Uh, let's see. All right, boring as fuck. Let's go on to the part that I wanted to hear. Somebody in Twitch made the intentional decision to unban Sneeko, Fresh and Fit, and also someone is making the intentional decision not to enforce their terms of service when talking about Jewish people. But I'm hallucinating, according to Hassan. Well, let's see if I'm hallucinating. The big story breaking right now is that since October 7th, Twitch has blocked the entire country of Israel from making new accounts. What the fuck? You hear that shit? Tell me that. Dude, Ethan might be right. This CEO of Twitch just might hate Jews. You know what I mean? Or, or maybe he was just trying to play the whole woke card, right? You know how like every uh, year... <clears throat> what is it like uh february or june one of those two where it's like gay pride month right all the companies they start getting real gay then the first of the month comes around boop they're like what are, who are gay what are gay people we don't know what gay people are what the what are you talking about and that's kind of like what this ceo of twitch probably did he probably the the whole october 7th thing happened right and he was probably like, oh, man, everybody's starting to go on this free Palestine bullshit, right? All right, let's make a statement here. Let's block Israel. That that might be what he's doing. Because if it's been happening since October 7th, it's not like this guy knew that this whole conflict was going to happen with Ethan. Now, tell me that's not the craziest shit you've ever heard. Secretly, silently, no statement, no explanation has blocked an entire fucking country. How does that happen? That happens pretty easily. I'm sure the guy just, like, made a couple calls and was like, hey, can one of you, like, put this into place? You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure it wasn't that crazy. But let's give it up for Ethan Klein having yet another meltdown on the What's Eating Ethan Klein segment. Now, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm doing kind of like a Burt Kreischer. I don't have acid reflux, though. And trust me. We are not going to be burping into no goddamn microphone. But we will be getting into the next set of time codes. Let's see. We got uh, Peter. No, no. We got Logan Paul and KSI on Impulsive. And we got this Sean Evans Hot Ones interview. Let's go with this Hot Ones interview. I want to kind of spark up that J again before we get into this KSI and Impulsive shit. So 
Sean Evans, we've covered him one time on the show. I talked about his interview with Shane Gillis. It was a very rough interview because it really seemed like Shane didn't want to be there the entire time. And Sean has this very rigid, like robotic style of interviewing people. Every time he gets on there, he's like, so your movie was probably one of the most iconic movies of all time. And you uh, did this one thing and the world would just like to know, how did you do that? You know, that's like always how he's interviewing people. It fucking throws me off. This interview we're about to watch has to probably be the saddest thing that Sean Evans has ever done. And it's because of the fact that this whole entire interview is all one big advertisement. This interview is not an interview that typically happens on Hot Ones. You always watch this show to watch the celebrity to get a better idea of who they are. You see them squirm a little bit, eating some hot wings, different things like that. I don't think there's ever been one. I mean, I'm not an avid watcher, so leave a comment if there is one. But to my knowledge, I don't think there's ever been an interview on Hot Ones that has just been a straight ad the entire time. Like, I'm talking from who the guest is, that's an ad. The hot sauces, they're all having to do with the guest. It's another ad. They're, and of course, they people use these interviews to promote their stuff, which is normal. But you're promoting the shit during an ad. The whole thing was a fucking ad. Wait until you see who this guy's interviewing. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions. He's interviewing Peter fucking Griffin. What the fuck? This is the this is the state of the fucking world right now. This is the state of Hot Ones. Sean Evans is on Hot Ones interviewing Peter Griffin. It's an even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Peter Griffin. He's a titan of the American sitcom and star of Family Guy, which celebrates its 25th anniversary this year. Peter Griffin, welcome to the show. How cringe is this? How actually how cringe is what we're watching right now? This is legitimately one of the cringest things I've seen online. And I hate watching Jack Doherty, okay? And this is more cringe than I've seen anything of him, you know? This is insane. Look it. You got the Peter Griffin. Remember I told you about them fucking hot sauce bottles? Look at that. All of them Family Guy characters. All of them Family Guy names, references. Guaranteed you could get a box set of them on Amazon for... $79.99, okay? The whole thing's an ad. How is this guy supposed to eat wings? How is he supposed to eat wings? I would love to see the unedited footage of this, of Sean just talking to a fucking empty seat. This would, that would, that would be better than this. Yeah, your show's not going to work on me. I came here already crying and snotting and diarrhea right <laughs> Okay, so I take it you've seen the show before. Are you the guy that makes glitter bombs go off when people steal packages? No. Are you the guy that pays for expensive eye surgery for people? Also no. Are you female bloopers? No. Wait, are you the hot sauce guy? Yeah, that- Yeah, yeah, that's me. I love that. This guy sucks at acting, too. That's me. Uh, That's pretty much all I've told you so far, but I'm happier here. It's nice to be a part of the decline of American journalism. Listen to that. Tell me that's not the most ironic statement you've ever fucking heard. This dummy. It's good to be a part of the decline of American journalism. This is like it. This is the decline, okay? And look at this. They don't even eat the wings. They don't even eat the wings. Like... I get, remember, Peter Griffin's a fucking cartoon character. We know he's not eating the wings. Sean doesn't even eat the wings. They, like, edit around the whole point of this show, which is eating the wings. They edit around all of that. Watch this. Peter, I know you're strapped for time and have opted for a five-wing gauntlet. But as a forewarning, I do have to say it's a very steep ramp up today. But we'll start with our most mild sauce. It's called Baby's Whisper. Oh, that reminds me, I left my baby in the car. Oh my god, do you... Do you want to go get him? Nah, the windows are up, so he can't get out. So, you come from a very funny family, and you're one of the greatest TV dads of all time. Off the top of your head and without thinking about it too much, who's your favorite kid? Uh, I'd have to say Bart. 
Hey, you don't mind if I keep my luggage under the table here, do you? I'm a little weird about leaving it alone. <laughs> no, no, you have a you have a very long leash on this show, all right? Whatever makes you comfortable, Peter. On that note, are you ready to move on here to the next sauce? They didn't eat a wing. He goes, you ready to move on to the next sauce? They haven't eaten a wing. It's in the, but there's a bite taken out of one. I need to see this shit. Continuity matters, bro. And this is what I'm talking about. You can't have this kind of shit happening here, okay? This guy. And look at this. They 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 move on to the hottest sauce. This whole video is only like five minutes long. They move on to the hottest sauce, right? And they try to make this whole big bit out of it. But it's it kind of doesn't work because he's talking to nobody. Anyone with this, like kids wouldn't even watch this. So who's this for? Because I'm telling you right now, I ain't falling for it. So who's this for? Yeah, I can see how hot it is from the bottle. It's just a picture of the devil blasting out of a guy's butthole. All right, give me that. Down a hatch. No, Peter, you're only supposed to put a little extra on the last wing. Scott, will you? Look, that's, tell me that's not grade A acting right there. Look at his face when he does this. No, Peter. Down a hatch. No, Peter, you're only supposed to put a little extra on the last wing. Scott, will you excuse me for a second? It's Sean, actually. I don't care. I need a moment. Hello? Lois, you need to come get me immediately. Sean is very mean. Okay, what, what, what is- Sean is very mean, Lois. Sean is so mean. He made me drink a whole bottle of hot sauce. This face that Sean has right here was the face I had making the whole entire time watching this thing. It's like, what is happening here? This is crazy. What is going on? What are you talking about? I lied about having COVID to be a big shot, and now I'm in a lot of trouble. Ah! Peter? I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> Peter, are you okay? Oh God, I touched it. What? Look, that this this was probably the craziest part of the whole video. Watch this. Wait until you see when he goes into the bathroom. <laughs> Peter, look, they got this big ass crazy like nice studio with all these nice cameras and shit. Look at the bathroom door on this bitch. Repaint that thing. When you see the paint like that starting to chip away like that. That's because so many people have touched that door that the, the just from the oils on the amount of hands that have touched that door, it's starting to eat away at all the paint that's on it. This is like, this show has to be making a good amount of money. You have to repaint these doors. I could only imagine what the inside of that bathroom looks like. Are you okay? Oh God, I touched it. What? I went from wing to it. What's it? What's your number? I'll text you. Maybe we should just get back to the interview. You know, what can you tell us about the Halloween special? Spooky specials are a time-honored sitcom tradition. Oh my God. See, so now he's gonna try to do the interview through the bathroom door. See, this is what I'm talking, this whole thing was an ad. You have to be careful with who these people are. You have to be careful trusting the stuff that you watch. Cause if they're willing to do it that blatantly, right? Who's to say what other kind of product placements they have? They probably sit, he's probably sitting there talking to the guests beforehand. Like, you have anything like you want us to like work into the interview? Like, I could say something. If you have something, you want to pay the show ten thousand more dollars, then I'll say that line during like a question for you. You know, is that something you want to do? Because like, what there has to be a conversation along those lines happening when they sit there and accept an advertisement from Family Guy. Which is why we love them. Let's give it up for Sean Evans, the host of Hot Ones here on Lost Ox Media. So now we're going to jump into these KSI and Logan Paul time codes. And then we're going to end it on that. This was a very, very interesting episode. Because KSI just recently released this like quote unquote hit single that he had. I think it was called... Uh, what was it called? It had like the the gayest fucking name for a song. The thick of it. The thick. It was the thick of it. He he released a song called the thick of it. It was like uh, from the screen to the pen to the ring to the king. I'm a and and I we can't play it because this guy is copyrighting people like a motherfucker. I'm talking Ethan Klein getting fucking copyrighted reacting to it. All the other creators getting copyright strike act, reacting to it. And KSI is sitting there online like defending himself out the ass. Because every single person has something bad to say about this goddamn song. And I listened to it. It was, it was trash. This shit was a trash. So 
that nothing good there. And he is getting pissed. He's reacting to people. He's talking shit to people. He's copywriting people's channels. He's doing the whole nine, right? And then they start talking about it on this episode. Now, that's one interesting point about it. The other interesting point, I I, I won't do this to you. I'm I'm baked, so I'm, I'm going to sit here and ramble on about it. Let's just get into the goddamn time codes, right? We, you don't want to listen to me just go on about the whole goddamn thing, do you? JJ, why are you wearing the pants that an astronaut would wear if they go to the moon? Just leave. Fucking roasted. Right out the rip on the intro. Big Mike sitting there tearing apart KSI's goddamn clothes because now that KSI thinks that he's like this, yo, I'm a big artist now, mate. I'm a real big artist now in the music scene, mate. So he wants to start dressing like a goddamn fool. And B- Big Mike sees this, starts roasting the shit out of him right, right away. Watch this. JJ, why are you wearing the pants that an astronaut would wear if they go to the moon? Just leave me alone, bro. I, I'm just better than you. Oh. How dare you? You've got <laughs> mozzarella sticks on your shirt, bro. Mozzarella sticks, bro. <laughs> Tell me that's not ironic as fuck. Big Mike coming in, roasting the shit out of KSI right from the rip. This guy's wearing a t-shirt that legitimately has a plate of mozzarella sticks with a dipping cup of marinara sauce. Says mozzarella sticks on the top of the shit in nice fancy letters. If that's not the pot calling the kettle black, I do not know what it is. You love your graphic tees. Dude, are you serious? What, you don't like you don't like cheese? I mean, I do like cheese. Fried cheese? cheese? Fried cheese is fantastic. Can I ask a question? Hit me. How, how exactly do you like your cheese? Uh, oh, that's right. Drippy, bro. <laughs> How long can we keep doing it? Whoa, I- Look it. You see Mike? This is going to play into some time codes in a second. You see Mike, how he's all about this Lunchly box, right? That's because in one of the more recent episodes, Logan ended up uh, surprising Mike at the end of the episode saying, Yo, dog, you know, we got this Lunchly thing going on, man. I want you to be part of it. I'm about to give you point. Zero, 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 one percent in the company. Right? And Big Mike's like, hell yes, that's going to equal out to like tens of thousands of dollars a year. I'm in. He's thank you. Thank you, Logan. Thank you so much. Logan's like, now, remember, it's going to be a very, very small percentage, like practically nothing. But you could put your name on it. You know, that's like the kind of shit that's happening. And Big Mike. You see, he's getting real comfortable with that Lunchly box because now he's like technically a part owner, right? And this is something that's going to play into this shit right now. Listen to this. They talk about this whole KSI song coming out, right? And then they bring up Mike Steak in Lunchly. How does it feel being a, a co-owner of Lunchly? So I, I, I gave yeah, him yeah, yeah, she gave him percentage. So yeah, good, yeah, I'm going to eat some right now, dude. Well, not a fool. Look, uh, it's so good, I'm going to eat some right now, bro. He's going to do like a burger review, but on this Lunchly shit, right? Watch. And he's so into, he wants to kiss the ass so bad, right? Because he wants that percentage to go up. He wants Logan to like see that he's like really dedicated to the brand, man. He wants him to see how dedicated he is to the brand. And then maybe Logan will like up my percentage a little bit as like a birthday present. You know, that's the kind of shit, right? That that you, because Mike is an addict. Don't forget. So he's he's got the mind of an addict. And he's about to show his dedication and loyalty to the brand after Logan brings up this very small percentage that he owns in the company now owner of Lunchly. So I, I, I gave yeah, him yeah, yeah, she gave him percentage. So yeah. good. I'm going to eat some right now, dude. Well, not a full percentage, you know. Like, oh, well, hey, well, we haven't discussed well, the actual amount yet. Yeah, well, oh, I, have, uh, me, I haven't tells, let him know, but. Something tells me it's going to be big. <laughs> yeah, nah. I've made it very clear it's going to be so minor. Yeah. You see? You see how fucking Logan looks at his friend? You see that? That's a shysty dude right there. To be wanting to, you know, knock his friend down a couple pegs like that live on air. After doing something so generous for him, you know, or at least he thinks it's generous. This guy is giving him like shackles, comparatively speaking. Now, once again, it is a very, in all honesty, it is a nice thing for Logan to do because Mike literally has nothing to do with the fucking product. Like, if that was me, I would be like, hey, man, just kick rocks, man. Are you lucky I even got you on the goddamn show? Okay, so let's not get crazy here. So that right away, 
Logan's like, it's a very small percentage. Mike's like, well, we haven't discussed it yet. We haven't had it on paper. Something tells me I might be able to schmooze you into a, a little bit more, you know? So let's not let's not solidify this just yet. You haven't even watched me eat the lunch lead yet. Wait until Big Mike is sitting in his head like, no, Logan, hold on. Wait until you see me eat the lunch lead first. Then we'll start talking percentages. Let him know, but <laughs> something tells me it's gonna be big. <laughs> nah, I've made it very clear it's gonna be so minor. <laughs> but but you know, yeah, it's it's uh. Anyways, welcome back to the United States. Yeah, How good to feeling? be here. Tired? Um, you know what? I'm actually all right. Not too bad. You know, slept well today. Um, Listen. or last night. What's it being? What's it like? <laughs> Look, he's eating. He's trying to show Logan. He's trying to show Logan right now. He's like, I'm so dedicated, brother. I'm so dedicated. All this drippy cheese and the mold on it, that don't mean nothing to me, man. As a matter of fact, I rate this burger a 10 out of 10. And he's crunching that shit into the microphone. And they're all wearing headphones. He knows what he's doing. He's like, like going into the microphone. He's like, low. basically those chews, every single crunch that goes into the microphone might as well be Big Mike saying, Logan, can you please make that percentage a little bit bigger? Please, can you do that for me, Logan? Can you make that percentage just a little bit bigger? Every single chew, he might as well be saying that, okay? Watch this guy. Well, today, um, or last night. What's it being, what's it like? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Look, Logan can't even concentrate. This guy's chewing so goddamn hard into the mic. And action. What's it like being a number one selling artist? What? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, but uh, I felt it's weird. It's weird. Like, I'm doing well. Like, the song's doing well. Um, I'm in the thick of it. Yep, yep. Everyone, everyone. everyone yep. Yep. From the screen to the, the ring to the pen to the king. I've been stuck in my head. Everyone loves it. Everyone, everyone loves it, he said. Everyone loves it. I'm telling Go on Twitter right now. Type in KSI Thick of It song. Watch every single reaction you get on that shit. Everyone's talking about how lame it is, man. And rightfully so, because it's coming from KSI. I don't even care. I will stay biased on this one point. Anything coming from him, Logan Paul, or Mr. Beast should not be trusted. That's just the way it is with me. In my book, that's the way it is. Now, he's lying to you. He's lying to you, saying that everyone loves the song. Nobody likes the song. And he's going to continue to lie to you about how he coped with all of this criticism. Everyone loves they it. They love it. They yeah, know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like, you know, this is a good time for me to tell everyone that I'm actually not pissed. Like, I'm not mad. Hold on. There's a much better. This guy is saying he's not mad. He's not mad. Dude, you should see the reactions that... Dude, this guy copyright striking the fuck out of people, bro. As a YouTuber, you know, I've said this on the show before. You don't do that as a YouTuber. He's tweeting out people, getting in fights with people to the point to where like the Logan brother, the Paul brothers are sitting there texting each other like, yo, is KSI all right? Jake Paul doesn't even like KSI. Jake Paul is sitting there texting Logan like, yo, is your boy okay? He's like fucking crashing out online. This guy wants to sit there and lie to you and say that he's not mad about it. Not pissed. Like, I'm not mad. Hold on. There's a much better way to do this. Okay. Yeah, that was so underwhelming. Okay. What, what? Nah, nah. Bro, bro, hold on. Bro, you didn't set him up right either. No, I, I well, didn't know he was going to just what you unveil it. Off was See? One of and now what you're listening to right there is this is the type of conversation that would be happening like before the cameras turn on. They go, hey, you guys want to like work in anything? You want to talk about anything a certain way? We could make you like, uh, we could like set you up to like talk about your song and then we could make it like a big reveal that you being mad online was all just a marketing ploy. That it, See, people like this will do this to cope with the fact that what they made was not good to the eyes of the public. So when you make something like this, when you write a song, you put so much work into it. Even if you have someone produce the beat, you're like, 
putting in the work on the lyrics, you're putting in the work on trying to sing it, get the get the timing right. You want to make sure that you hit up this note like this at the pre-chorus and then once the drop hits, you're singing it just like this. Like it might not be backbreaking work, but it still takes work to put it together, whether it's good or bad. So usually when the person who's behind that work puts it in, they they take pride in it and they have a different lens on what it is, comparatively speaking, to the rest of the world. They think that it's good. They're always going to think nobody thinks their child is ugly. That's the way that it is. It's the same concept, right? So he sat there and he defended his creation to the bone, to the point where he was fucking with people's monetization, their money. And he felt that strongly about it. But now everyone's making fun of him for that. They're making fun of the way that he's handling himself online. So now KSI has to sit there at home and think, Oi, mate, how am I going to get myself out of this one? I'm really in the thick of it, man, mate. This this shit is bananas. The way I'm, all I'm trying to do is defend my song, man. And everyone online is sitting there real crazy. You know, they're getting real crazy out there. So he's probably talking to a publicist. He's like, Oi, mate, we got to make this go away. How are we going to do that, mate? This guy's probably like, oh, well, you could just tell, like, let's just say it was a marketing tactic. Let's say that we wanted to defend it so that everyone would hate on it more and then more people would listen to it to become a number one hit. Listen, man, you can't ironically listen to the shit everywhere, you know? If you got all those views like that, right? If you pumped up those numbers, those are ghost numbers then. It might be a hit. What happens when you go on tour to perform it and nobody shows up? Because most of those views, most of those hits were people talking shit. You perpetuating the hate of your song. That's not going to work out for you in the long term, my friend. And so this is all just a cope. He's just coping with all of this criticism. And this is how he's doing it by saying, I'm not mad. It's not going to be doing as well as it is now. Like yeah, it, it might you know go up and you know do well. That's a, well, the, well, that's the but th- then it's gonna fall off the face of the earth mm-hmm. the next week. Well, that's the thing about attention and views is like <clears throat> they're they're objective. Like the statement yeah. you just made is subject. Like any song can be good or not good depending on the person. Yeah, you ask, yeah right. That's true. Scoreboard, scoreboard. Like yeah. views or views. With all of the attention around the rollout. I don't know if enough attention was given to the song itself. So I do want to ask you about some of these lyrics. Um, I don't know nothing about no ice. I'm just cold. Have you thought about maybe putting on another layer of clothing? <laughs> Look at that. Now Mike wants to sit there. You're trying to tell me everyone likes a song. If Big Mike is sitting there making fun of the lyrics of your goddamn song, you got a problem. That guy thinks everything is good. So if he's sitting there talking shit about it, you got a problem. But let's not forget... KSI is not the only shithead in this room. Logan has just been controversy after controversy throughout his whole time online, right? And when you get famous, like super young, like Logan did, it's like you you get disassociated from or dissociated from the world in in a way like no other. It's like almost like you've never grown up in the real world. You've been ri- it's like someone who's been insanely rich their entire life like yes it it exists you your your riches and wealth and your whole ecosystem exists in the real world but it's not a majority of the real world which is where the rest of us happen to live so you get someone like logan they have that kind of dissociation from the world that doesn't really make a good recipe for like a well-rounded adult you know doesn't make for a good person nine times out of ten and uh, you you come to think, has Logan just always been this shitty of a person? And uh, he said this one thing on the podcast that made me truly believe, yes, he is. He always has been. Listen to the way that he betrayed one of his close friends when they were younger. And this is a big one. When I was coming up on Vine, there was another kid at our school who was coming up on Vine. And I, and I, I tweeted at him. I was like, Referring to me, Jake, and him, I was like, if one of us gets Vine famous, we need to make sure we all get Vine famous. And we just left that moment. <laughs> Listen to that, dude. They left this guy. This kid, could you imagine being one of the three amigos and and 
one of the guys, he hits it big. He, Of course he's going to take his brother and leaves you in the goddamn dust. What happened to that pact? You know? And this is the craziest thing about it. What would it have taken to bring your friend along with you? If you end up getting that famous, you could just have this guy like in the background of the video and he would get followers off of that. It would it would take nothing. You could have him say like a one line in like a three million view video. That's it. This guy's social media career is made. After that, you could actually just set him free and be like, go do your own solo shit. You got a following now, right? They would have taken nothing to actually go through with that promise. Instead, even as a child, even as a kid growing up and into this social media economy, Logan still knew that the best way to get ahead is to backstab, cheat, and steal. Even at a young age, he knew that. You think that this guy is up to any good? If he's been doing that shit his entire life, and he says it with this smile on his face, you think this guy's any good? You think he's any different than that? who that kid was back in that time? He's not. And he's always going to be that person. We ha- That's why I wanted to show this to you. We had to document this. He's, he's older. He's in his 60s. When I was coming up on Vine... There was another kid at our school who was coming up on Vine, and I and I I tweeted at him. I was like, referring to me, Jake, and him. I was like, if one of us gets Vine famous, we need to make sure we all get Vine famous. And we just left that moment <laughs> in the dust, in the dust, bro. I, he still tweets at me to this day. He's like, bro, what happened to this? Look, he still tweets at this guy to this day. They're laughing at this poor dude on this podcast right now. They're laughing at him. How many people you think are going to see this? How many people you think are going to see this? They're fucking degrading this guy. Who they promised. And they're fucking laughing about it. That is some fucking cold-hearted shit. In the dust, bro. I, he still tweets at me to this day. He's like, bro, what happened to this text? I'm like, bro, I don't know. You didn't want it. He just didn't He didn't make vines. Um. Oh, what's his name? Oh, man, I guess that that's... Well, so, okay. Look, and then if Logan would have remembered, he would have fucking doxed him. Tell me that is not wild, bro. That is the wildest shit. Like, I'm telling you, if, if you're if you still... If you're over the age of, like, 13 and you're actually a fan of this guy, you got some issues. You got to do some shit with yourself because this is not the way. Nobody should be buying anything off this guy, to buying any uh, bitcoins that he's promoting, any primes, any other. This this is not the type of person that you want to do business with, unless you're a businessman. Then this is the type of person that you definitely want to do business with. Someone who's gonna lie, cheat, steal, and backstab people just like you. Isn't that some shit? Isn't that just about the greatest thing that you've ever fucking heard? So I think that'll do it for good old Logan Paul KSI and the uh, Impulsive Crew. And that'll actually also do it for this week's episode of Lost Ox Media. Let's uh, turn up a little bit of music, start getting ready to uh, call this an episode. As always, I'd like to thank you for coming for another week of debauchery. And checking out our favorite Jamokes and taking a second look at what we just watched here at Lost Ox Media. Be sure to catch YouTube videos every Wednesday at 4 p.m. at youtube.com backslash at Lost AUX Media. That's youtube.com backslash at Lost Ox Media. You can also catch the audio episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else you listen to your favorite podcast. 5 a.m. on Wednesdays as well. That way, you can listen to the uh, episodes on your way to work. When you get home from work, you can watch them. That's just the way that we do it here over at Lost Ox Media. So, as always, I'm going to thank you once again and bid you adieu. Goodbye. You better watch out. You better watch out. You'll soon find out, no doubt. You better watch out. You better watch out. You'll soon find out, no doubt. Just pulled up with the boys, shit, I'm loud, cause we love that noise.
Ice flashing the bills at the security. Hit the front of the line, pockets on steroids. You get it?